Wait a minute. Dan. Dan? No, that's it. Dan, well, I guess I'll just have to take it. I'm Bob Friedman. Uh, Dan is on assignment. Uh, but along with me, of course, as always, our panel of uh, experts. Uh, we have the lovely and talented <laughs> Marty Katz and uh, the uh, ever effusive John Price. <laughs> and, of course, I am the quiet and the dignified Bob Friedman. We're going to talk a lot about a lot of things tonight. Um, football is king. Soccer is king. Playoffs coming up. Talk about the week in review. A lot of things that are going on. Uh, starting off with, of course, the playoffs. Uh, it looks as if uh, we are all set to go with the playoffs. And, uh, guys, it's going to be a very interesting uh, next few weeks. It's going to be a real nice ride, and uh, looking forward to it. You know, of course, uh, before we even get to the football playoffs, uh, right now as we speak, the soccer playoffs going on, of course, we were fortunate enough, our teams were so outstanding that we have two teams in the finals. And we're back on uh, Sportsline on this uh, Tuesday evening. Nice to have you with us. A uh, little late, but uh, I'm here. I'm Dan Taylor. We were talking uh, football playoffs, gentlemen. Well, we were. We were. You were. I was listening. I was paying attention. <laughs> uh, and the uh, football this past weekend. Uh, Central Bucks yeah, East, Central Bucks West, or? I think uh, the first uh, first thing I want to mention is the fact that uh, LaSalle had a 32-game win streak rolling into uh, the weekend, and they left without it. Mm -hmm. uh, they were beaten narrowly by... Ryan, and who and blocked in a that hard fought game? And coincidentally enough, the guy who blocked that extra point was John Price. John <laughs> Price, no What's relation, not me. I wish. Was there a question? Was there a question of offsides? Something about that, yeah. But you know, it's funny you mentioned Ryan because our Catholic League team from our area, Archbishop Wood, will be playing Ryan this weekend. And Wood, after a loss to North Catholic this past weekend, needs to beat Ryan to make the playoffs for the first time in 11 years. We certainly would love to see Wood get into the playoffs. Mike Becker, another fine game passing as a quarterback position for Wood the other day on Sunday. Uh, William Tennant met Plymouth White Marsh, and uh, they lost that one. It was uh, the head coach, uh, uh, William Tennant head coach, going against his uh, former team, but Plymouth White Marsh doing the job. And PW, also, of course, getting prepared for Downingtown this weekend. Right, and uh, mm -hmm. Central Bucks West will have uh, Hapro Horsham. Yeah, CB West uh, played, uh, of course, it was the East West game, and uh, I think. And the weather broke very nicely for the game, actually. Uh, uh, Tom, Tommy White and I did that game, and as you'll see. And, and it really kind of showed up West is ready for the playoffs to a degree. But what concerned me, guys, was the amount of penalties that West took at this time of the season. Um, 
I was surprised at that. By this time, and we talked about this so long, a lot of precision, a lot of things that go well, and there were there, there were some things that I'm sure Mike Pettin looked at during the game, even though the game was won was won by West, mm -hmm. that he's probably not happy about, and they want to correct in this coming week as they head out. Head to play uh, Hapro Horsham, of course, at home. They can't overlook Hapro Horsham. They can't just look past them to wonder who they're going to play the next week. They did that two years ago, uh, and uh, they were stunned by Plymouth White Marsh. Last year, I think they were just beaten flat out. I mean, they weren't looking past them. Just PW played a better game. But um, uh, Corey Potter had a great uh, coming out party the other night against East, right? Corey Potter was fabulous. Yeah, he was just fabulous. I think the whole supporting crew, uh, and and obviously uh, anyone who was familiar with the game at all, realized that Armstrong was utilized uh, very effectively in his role, um, and I think it ended up um, with about forty percent of the offense. And normally he's about eighty to ninety percent, but you had a couple of the other guys that amounted for uh, the majority of the touchdowns and the majority of the yardage, and mm -hmm. and things really clicked, and it's clicked, and it's very nice. For West to have that and establish that going into uh, going into the playoffs, but Hatboro got a uh, a little bit of a, of a belated playoff uh, gift from a school out in Ohio who's naturally ranked along with West uh, Saint Ignatius. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that as we do the uh, the team of the week segment each week, Hatboro would probably like to lobby for Saint Ignatius as their team of the week because they basically sprung mm -hmm. them into the playoffs. But it'll be interesting. You know, I wanted to say before we move on, and uh, I know we're going to talk about Hatboro and West a little a lot later on. But uh, last week, I, I was unable to be here, but we had done the East game the week before uh, East Ben Salem, Dan yes. and I. And I haven't been able to speak. I wanted to talk a little bit about Brian Scott because uh, first time I've seen him, and that is an outstanding running back as a junior. He reminds me a lot of Marcus Allen. I mean, the way he runs, he picks his holes so nicely, gets seven, eight yards at a pop. I mean, that guy's a big-time running back. Yeah, they, uh, and, and the biggest tribute that could be given to Scott was the fact that Usually when West kicks off after, uh, when they kick off, they don't really do any kind of scheme other than to get the ball downfield and work their lanes. They were specifically, specifically kicking the ball away from Scott through the majority of the game to the point where they were kicking it out of bounds, kicking it short. And they made the mistake once of getting the ball to Scott. And he almost broke it. He almost broke it. He went about 45 yards, and I'm telling you, he is a, he is a flash. He's going to be very, very good. Didn't have the world's greatest supporting cast this year. They they were injury riddled. There's no two ways about it. But I'll tell you what. Um, they played a good game. They mm -hmm. played a pretty good game on Saturday night. Well, I I, I got to hand it to Larry Green and his crew. He had he had the kids ready to play. What I like about Scott is you know he, once he gets he hits the hole he keeps going he keeps churning and I yeah. like running backs like that 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 uh, yeah. he, you said that he finds the lanes and finds holes but if he runs into a crowd he seems somehow either to bull his way through that crowd or get out of that situation and uh, and find a lane. And he also has the toughness and, of course, the size to be able to carry the ball 25 to 30 times a game, too. It'll be exciting to see him next year with another level of maturity physically under his belt and another year of seasoning to come back next year for East. It'll be a, a, yeah. a, a nice um, draw for, for this area to have a running back of that caliber. And, you know, in that game, too, I know you guys probably spoke last week about it, but to Ben Salem, I mean, we have to talk about Keith Davis. That was the first time we've seen him, too. He's a sensational player and, and more of a, I mean, a darter and a dasher than maybe Scott. I mean, he's the kind of guy, you get him in the open field. We saw an 82-yard pass reception he made with Dunner. I mean, a bomb, just a flat-out fly pattern. It was just something beautiful to behold, and he's a great back, Davis. Yeah. Another big game this past week, uh, he had 110 yards in their 36 nothing win over the Galloping Ghost of Abington. There's a team that the tide has uh, turned. The Ghosts, they used to be so dominant at yeah. least into to a certain point in the season and then they would run into problems but they really had a tough season it was a tough year and of course i mean they were on the road the whole season you know they played 11 well they played nine or ten ten games now all on the road so that that's a tough thing for high school players. is willie nelson their mascot <laughs> they uh, have to go on the road they, they of course are redoing the abington right. uh, field and so forth and so they're on the road, and they have one more game against my alma mater, and that ought to be a real barn burner. Well, guys. it was a great game last year, Abington and Cheltenham. I was there covering that one. Yeah. Abington had a great come from behind win. In that oh, I one. know that, but they have yeah. combined for one win this year. Yeah. Uh, it's always it's, a great game, though. Oh, yeah. It, 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 yeah. Like, that's, that's, I mean, you're going to have a – that'll be a good game. Yeah. Because you have two teams that have had a, a you know, a tough year. They're playing for pride. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see a good football oh, game. Oh, I don't question it's going to be a good game. It's just yeah. a shame to see – 
two programs which historically have been very rich in football talent, especially Abington, uh, to fall on the times that they have. You can put a lot of it to the fact of playing away. Fact of the matter is, they've just been beaten in most of the It's too bad nobody would be able to really uh, take advantage and enjoy a game uh, like that. I'm sure that the crowd's not going to be as big as it would be, say, for uh, like a, a Plymouth White Marsh downing town this weekend, which I think is probably the draw of the area um, this coming weekend. That's going to be an absolutely fabulous game, and I'm, I'm, I'm Curious to see how it's going to turn out. I think this West Tapper Horsham game is going to be a, yeah. a big, big draw because if you look back to uh, the history of uh, these two teams back when it used to be the Bucks mine, mm -hmm. and some of the games they had the the, the infamous uh, scoreboard or the uh, clock game where I heard of that one. You know, yeah, where I heard, I heard fans about that were literally paper, banging yeah. on the press well, box. Yeah. And it makes more interesting now that Dennis Steinle has come back yes. with uh, re his brief uh, retirement. Tom White did a terrific job of getting the people after the game. He had a chance to talk to Mike Pett, and he talked about that. And Pett kind of got that look in his eyes like he's ready to go. He mentioned Steinle, and, you know, he, they, they clashed many occasions mm -hmm. in the old Bucksmont League. Um, before we move on, I, I do have to say that um, I owe John Price pizza. <laughs> <laughs> For what? I'd rather not get into it. <laughs> well, you know, before we move on, and we'll talk about that later too, we don't want to forget Lansdale Catholic also moving into the playoffs this weekend. The 3A playoffs, they're going to be playing Upper Perk, a team that they beat earlier. And, of course, LC defeated uh, Phoenixville 37-20 this past weekend to clinch that playoff berth with uh, Mike DeMarta Lear having another great game at quarterback. And uh, that's a great team, the Crusaders, always every year, tough 3A team. And we were talking about Cheltenham. How about Quakertown? Uh, in overtime, they defeated Cheltenham with Schulberger. 92-yard touchdown, I think it was, to tie it. And then he scored the winning touchdown in overtime. And he's had a great year. And that's the team we're going to see this weekend. Quakertown against William Tennant should be a good battle. But John is just chomping at the bit to talk about the North Bay. Yeah, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of drool coming out right in, right in this area here. If someone can get a napkin, because I like the extra cheese. Is it going to come while we're on the air? Sorrentos. So yeah. when you're ordering some Sorrentos, get the extra cheese platter, please. I tried to order, but they didn't have a double overtime cheese pizza. <laughs> As you may know, uh, Norristown, or may already know Norristown, defeated North Ken. We had a little friendly bet going on there. I haven't had a chance to stop at Sorrentos and pick up a pizza. But I'll take care of you, John. It was, right. That's where I was. It was not ready, so I thought that I... <laughs> ah, there we are. That was the answer. He was on assignment at Sorrentos. There you yeah. go. And we need an instant replay. <laughs> and Southerton, another great win this week, too. They go to 8-2 and two with a big win over Penn Ridge. Southerton's had a tremendous season. Just missed out in that you know, final playoff berth. And, well, that was like the tale of two games because I think that it was a 7-3 score at the half. Penridge really felt like they were in, in it almost by accident because they certainly didn't do any type of domination. But uh, by the end of the game, uh, Penridge had been sacked eight times for 62 wow. yards. And Saturday's defense started to started to roll towards the end. And Overholt uh, wasn't as effective in the air, but it didn't really matter because they got over 200 yards in the ground. Uh, Mendez and Jeff Ball combined for like 170 yards and four of the touchdowns. So uh, the, the need for uh, – Overholt to go through the air wasn't there. Let's talk about the playoffs a little bit. Your your, your uh, thoughts about uh, guys about what we're going to be seeing as we see Plymouth White Marsh taking on Downing Town, and of course the Bucks will be hosting Hatboro Horsham. Uh, where do you think it goes from here? So you're asking us to make predictions. That would be a <laughs> well, double or nothing. Double nothing. <laughs> I know. You know, we talk a lot about West. Well, I got a little scouting report on Hatboro Horsham from. My good buddy, the outstanding sports writer Eric Fisher at the record, and just to you know prepare our fans a little bit for Happer Horsham this Friday night. They might not have seen them. Uh, they have Brian Haggerty, a quarterback, a sophomore, throwing to his brother Dennis Haggerty, and uh, Eric tells me that they like to run first, but then they'll mix in the play action passes. So that's the thing we got to watch out for. And also, Happer is tough inside on defense. They, of course, they're going to want to stop up the middle there against Armstrong. They have Brian Halp and Dave Maloney, a couple of big guys uh, uh, stacked in the middle, and Aaron Mohar, a big uh, a big man, a defensive tackle. So they're going to want to stuff – they have to want to stuff the run against Armstrong, of course. And I think Capro had a great season, but I just think they're they're overmanned. And, and, and generally speaking, I stay away from making a, a prediction where I'm, I'm expecting a, a three-touchdown game, but that, that's kind of what I see here. I think that we've discussed Armstrong before in the past, and he is the, the throwback to yesteryear, and the thing that he has going for him that some of the other throwbacks that West has had in, in, in the past, like a Bill Tomlinson or a Bill Kilkenny, 
is that he's six feet four and 250 to 260 pounds. And, and I just think that it's going to be difficult for Hatboro to, to just combat that. I mean, I, I watched West play this season and it's not the most exciting thing to, to look at, but certainly they get themselves in, in, in great position. And I really think Hatboro is going to have a difficult and time. Do we see uh, West coming out and doing something different offensively like we did in that state championship a few years ago where they no. ran, ran, ran all year and all of a sudden no. they come out throwing the ball. No, I think, I think <clears throat> the one thing John hits on a good point and, and, and something else has got to be considered is that Hatboro Horsham, the competition that they have played this year with the exception of Plymouth White Marsh, which they caught early in the season. Uh, if you're going to play a great team, play them early and you have a real good shot at them. I, I question what the outcome would have been if they'd have played last week, for example. Uh, Hapra Horsham plays in the American Conference. And with all due respect to Sodden is a great team, and, and there's some real good teams there. But the American Conference, generally, the football is not quite as rock'em sock'em as, as the Power Ten is in the National Conference. Hapra Horsham has gone up. They were beaten by a good Sodden team. They beat Plymouth White Marsh. They have defeated a number of different teams. But uh, West really has uh, has gone against some tough competition. And uh, on that note, I think we should uh, take a quick break and we can talk a little more about the class when we come back. I'll pick the team of the week. There you go. We'll be right back. Only one fishing lure proven to catch all these fish and virtually every species of game fish in North America. It's the Banjo Minnow, the world's first and only genetic response fishing lure. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Dance. But I'm here to tell you the Banjo Minnow is truly the most exciting thing I've seen in a mighty long time. The Banjo Minnow will outfish every fishing lure in existence today. We had made a fishing lure that actually made fish bite, even if they weren't hungry. And it works. It's amazing, totally amazing. I've not missed a fish on the banjo minnow. Just is amazing. It's just unbelievable. Have your credit card ready and call now to order the complete 110-piece banjo fishing system. You get 24 banjo minnows in three different sizes and four colors. Banjo weedless bait hooks, counterbalance jigs, and much, much more. All yours for only $29.95. For faster service, have your credit card ready and call the number on your screen right now. This bait is phenomenal. Do you mind? Right, now pay attention. All of SD Studio's replicas in the James Bond collection are exact in specification to the originals in every way. Well, in that case, 24 karat gold plating on that part could be a bit brighter. Keep up the good work, old man. To get your own 24 karat gold plated engraved collector's bullet free, join the James Bond Collector Society for just $29.95. Call now, 1 888 85 Crops to join or order any of the James Bond collectibles. Since 1958, Eagles Peak Spring Water has been the answer for homes and businesses alike. Serving all of Bucks and Eastern Montgomery counties, delivery is always free. Eagles Peak offers pure bottled drinking water as well as distilled, plus a convenient office coffee service. Cooler rentals and sales are available, along with a wide selection of attractive ceramic dispensers. For new customers only, mention this ad and receive two free bottles of water with the rental or purchase of a water cooler. Remember, when you reach for the peak, you reach for the best. Hello again, everybody, and uh, back on the sports line with John Price, Dan Taylor, Bob Friedman. I'm Marty Katz. We're still talking football. We're still talking playoffs coming up, and we have some exciting news for you. A late addition to our schedule, the playoff game, of course, this week between West and Hapro Horsham has been added to our television schedule, and we'll have that for you next Tuesday night right after our sports line show. And, of course, later in the week we'll be seeing – uh, Quaker Town and William Tennant, which is a game that Greg Betts and I will be doing Friday night as West and Happer Horsham take it on. And I'm sure that's going to be a great game, too, for you fans of Quaker Town and William Tennant. But uh, let's continue talking a little bit more about Happer Horsham and CB West, guys. Uh, I know we were getting a little bit well, I think into the area of predictions. But we following the live broadcast this evening, I think we're going to be doing the East-West game, too. Mm -hmm. So yes. yeah. stay tuned in for Before that. Before we get to the playoffs, shouldn't we pick our team of the week so we don't forget? No? Yeah, I think we should. And Bob, that is your responsibility. I think, uh, thank you very much. I, 
I have the responsibility of being laid on my shoulders. So therefore, team of the week. Um, you could say West for for winning. You know, the, the going undefeated in the regular season. You can say the table's going to break on us. You can say any number of different things. <laughs> the table didn't like that one, so we're going to go to a different one. Um, but the team of the week, and Dan, I think you, you really would go the honors on that because you really did bring it up. Uh, started out with a tough start and has come on strong at the end of the year. I would like to nominate the Ben Salem Owls as team of the week. They uh, finish at 6-4, and four, which as I think it was either – uh, Davis or Lewis said, you know, six and four is a lot better than five and five. They were winless last year. They've had a couple of tough years in that program. Biz Keeney comes in from Kutztown, does a, a great job in one year, really going from O for to six and four is quite an accomplishment. Very impressive team and a very exciting team. I mean, the thing that really impressed me the most, I think, when they played great in that game against Easter, we covered. But here they were. They had a twenty to fourteen lead, their own thirty yard line, second down with about five minutes left. They were not protecting the ball. They went on a bomb. Dunner attempting a pass to Lewis, almost complete. And, I mean, that takes a lot of guts. And that's exciting football. And Biz Keeney played. Uh, he had them playing exciting, winning football. This and year. they win so, again this past weekend to get to that 6-4 and four mark. Son. Prashan Lewis may be the best all-around athlete in this area. Great basketball mm -hmm. player. Great football player. Super athlete. Mm -hmm. Had a chance to watch him play basketball last winter. Really can play, yeah. play both teams. That's very, a team to watch in basketball this year, too, Ben. Sam, the, only, good. the only disappointment is that you lose your, your Dunner, uh, you lose Dunner, Lewis, and Davis. They're graduating. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, um, they're not they disappointed, though. No, they're not disappointed, <laughs> but the fans are disappointed <laughs> because it would be nice to see those three come up and, and some other players in that program yeah. continue to grow. Back to what we were talking about with the playoffs. Um, before we took the break, I was talking to Hamper or Horsham. They're playing Cheltenham. They're playing uh, teams of caliber that are not the caliber. That, in, in every week after week, you've got Council Rock. You've got CB East. You've got North Penn. You've got Norristown, who's mm -hmm. very strong this year. You've got very strong teams every week that could sneak up and bite you. And, well, I and, know. I know. You're right there. And I, and I think the National Conference is definitely the best conference in the state of Pennsylvania it's got to be I think but but I'm going to I'm going to take a vote here I'm not going to say Happer Horsham is going to beat West but I think they'll make it a game and I think they'll stay in that game till into the deep into the second half with them I think West will come out as a victor but I think they'll know that they'll have been in a tough game I really do yeah I agree with you Marty I think that it will be a good game and you know and I hope that it's a good game yeah you, know, you don't want to go see a playoff game and, and, and see a blowout you know, you know the fans don't want to see it the players don't want to be mm -hmm. a part of it uh, I think that uh, because we haven't seen that much of Hatboro Horsham, although Coach Petten and his crew have sure have been scouting them, um, I look for some good competition uh, into the second half. But I look look for West to turn it on at the end of the win, and I hope that they get it straight now with the uh, penalties like you talked about, Bob. I give Hatboro Horsham a chance only because of one, uh, one reason and one reason only, and that's Dennis Steinle. Dennis Steinle has, has been and mm -hmm. is one of the best coaches in the area. Yes, you know, Mike Petten is a super coach, but Steinle has been around, been around just about as long. Mm -hmm. He's he, he's taken Hopper Horsham to the heights. He knows what it's like to beat C.B. West. Yeah. He knows what it's like. He has been on the other sideline and winning games. That said, I think it's a close game for a while. I think that West wears them down. I think the final score is somewhere in the neighborhood of around 28-14. Sounds about right. You know, Hapro Horsham, uh, five years ago, were, won the 3A championship. At that time, they were 3A. They won the district championship. That was the time when they did not move on to the state playoffs. They only went to the district playoffs. State playoffs, of course, instituted since then. I think for, for a number of factors, they're, they're not really going to keep it as close. Um, kind of stepping out of character and pulling a Bob Friedman, I think that it's pretty much going to be a, a game that Hatboro just has too, too many things to prepare for. Um, I see the game maybe in the uh, second quarter starting to get out of hand, maybe even the end of the first, and I don't see him coming back. I think the fact that a lot of the reasons that Bob uh, mentioned about the fact that they don't necessarily get a, a great opportunity to prepare against that caliber of an opponent, and secondarily, um, it's great for a sophomore quarterback to, to be able to um, – play and, and excel in some circumstances, but uh, when it's playoff time and you've got a sophomore quarterback taking snaps, he had a great game last week and they did all they had to to beat a Methacton team, which is a good team, um, but I just don't think that that caliber of play and, and being a sophomore quarterback is going to hold up against uh, a team of um, the strength of the Central Bucks West. 
might note that John is also a graduate of Central Park West. <laughs> uh, you know, so. yeah. <laughs> and, and getting back to where we started at the beginning of the show, let's not forget, of course, our soccer guys. And best of luck now to Council Rock and Penn Ridge as they take on their opponents tonight. And hopefully they will meet Saturday for a berth in the state semifinals. That would be tremendous. And, of course, best of luck to LC as well as they go Absolutely. up against Upper Perk. Yeah. Uh, at Upper Perk, that, that's that's a lot to do there. They've got to go out to Upper Perk and beat a 9-1 and team. They're 9-1 and one also. Yeah. Uh, I love I wish... what LC showed. Uh, DeMar Lear, as we've discussed week after week, is a, is a great passer. But uh, against Phoenixville this past weekend, he had 50 yards on the ground on six rushes. Mm. So he showed uh, another dimension to his game. Again, which one, is of the, help one him. of the finest coaches in the area, Jim Algeo. Yeah. yeah. Always, always. Yeah. A, and uh, the Algeo and DeMar DeLira family just keep pumping out the talent. I Unbelievable. Mean, you know, yeah. Someone should investigate what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous, I'll tell you. But, you know, uh, that was we had a great show tonight, guys. Uh, tremendous show uh, for John Price and Dan Taylor and Bob Friedman. I'm Marty Katz. We want you to stay tuned and watch the outstanding CB West, CB East game from this past weekend. We know you'll find it exciting. And we want you to join us again next week when we'll be discussing, hopefully, further on into the state playoffs in both soccer and football for our teams. So for my friends here tonight, we wish you a good week and uh, take care, everybody. For 28 years, the Bucks and Patriots have teed it up. In that time, many things have changed. We've gone from love beads to leisure suits to designer jeans and back to retrofit. And still, the game has been the game. We've gone through six presidents and four governors. Man has walked on the moon and Mars has become a suburb of Earth. And still, the game has been the game. It's been played at War Memorial Field and at Del Val. And it's come back to War Memorial. It's been rained on, snowed out, played in cold so numb that it would uh, so cold that it would numb an Eskimo. Until 1994, it was a Thanksgiving staple. Then playoffs changed everything. And still, the game has been the game. It's seen over a thousand young men take the field for the red, white, and blue, and the black and gold. Over 1,700 minutes of football has been played. Most of them memorable, some unforgettable. And still, the game is the game. There are only two constants, two things that have not changed. One is Mike Pettin, who leads his bucks out on the field for the 29th time. The other is that no matter what their records may be, the game is still the game. Central Box East, Central Box West football, the 29th renewal of the biggest backyard battle in Eastern Pennsylvania, and it's coming up next right here on SCT. Bob Friedman along with Tommy White here at War Memorial Field on a wet, warm 1st of November. It is the game, Tommy. It's east-west. What more can you say? Always a great matchup. We look for the two running backs tonight named Dave Armstrong and Brian Scott. Both come in about 20 yards apart. 12.57 for Dave Armstrong, 12.37 for Brian Scott. And it should be a very interesting to game as these two premier running backs in Suburban 1 will tee it up. And hopefully the uh, the one with the best night comes out victorious. You see Larry Green there. He's in his second tour of duty as head coach of the Patriots, who will be the home team for the uh, uh, this uh, year's game. You see a sea of red, white, and blue in front of us and a lot of slippers. And that's something we need to talk about. The weather is going to be a factor. Besides the fact that it rained all day, it is not raining now. The winds are supposed to pick up quite a bit. It is a warm night. It is a night that's susceptible to cramping. Temperatures are in the 60s right now. and not expected to get much below 60 degrees tonight. Yeah, the weather's a factor. Right now, it's not raining. 
However, they're calling for showers tonight. Right now, they play the game the way it is. The field is wet. You could see guys slipping down, trying to make that cut upfield. Again, the ball's going to be wet. That could be a factor. Guys having tr tough trouble holding on to the ball. Again, both teams have to deal with those two conditions. It's not going to favor one or the other. So that's one thing they're going to definitely have to deal with. Well, as you look out in the middle of the field, you see the brown and you see the shiny brown of the field. That field, of course, with soccer being played on it, uh, football being played on it, all year long for east and west, that field, as you can imagine, has been worn down. However, there has been a lack of rain up until the past week, which could keep the field at least somewhat uh, less sloppy than it has been in years past. Nonetheless, right where West is coming out, and they're all meeting right about 35-yard line, it is very moist. Same thing with the 35 on the other side. Those are going to be problems. When they get inside the, thir the 30s, things get a little bit better. It's going to be for East an uphill battle. It has been a long season. There's no question about it. A very questionable loss last week uh, to Penn Salem in a game that uh, they came just 12 yards shy of pulling a big victory out. It's been a tough year for the Patriots. There's no two ways about it. For the Bucks, well, they're gearing up for the playoffs. Again, as I said in my teeth in the beginning, the game is still the game no matter what. Well, it's a neighborhood battle. The kids have played in the youth leagues together. They've gone through the junior high programs together. They get the east and west, and this is the big day. This is the day where you say, hey, I played against you uh, in that big east-west game. Now East hasn't had a lot of success. They've only won two times and had a tie in this in the 28 meetings prior to this. But you never know. And the thing that there is, I, don't, I know Mike Pettin is saying to himself tonight, the guy that scares him the most and probably the premier back in this whole league is Brian Scott. He comes out and have a, has a monster game. It could be a it could be a very interesting night for the Bucks. And as we say farewell, the Armstrong era. We say, hey, one more year of Brian Scott, who, you, as you say, is and could, could be and will be the premier running back in the area. Brian has had a great year. They're not that far apart in yardage. Of course, Dave Armstrong, this is his final game, at least regular season, as a buck. And he will be moving on to the University of Michigan. A great career. We saw him as a ninth grader. We watched, had the pleasure of watching him four years. I'd like to say we've seen the boy grow, but he was a monster when he was in ninth grade. 6'4", 220 pounds then. He's just built onto his bulk, and he's just, he's just huge. He's a tremendous, tremendous young player, a tremendous young man. As the Bucks of CBS come onto the field, they are the visiting team. They come on first. They will go to the far side. CBS waiting to be introduced. For East, they have some weapons, but they have been decimated by injuries. The latest injury to Ryan Luganville, their uh, wide receiver. I do not believe that he will play tonight, Tommy. He won't play. Manny Stapakis won't play. One of their captains who tore an ACL about two weeks ago, and that's a big loss for them. You're going to see uh, some young guys, Campbell, R.J. White, and Taylor get a shot to fill in in that spot. Bevavino, who has a bad wheel, he's going to try to go at fullback. So they have been banged up. But again, the adrenaline is going to be flowing tonight. Hopefully, they're going to be able to go on that. The pressure is on Justin Habel. Habel and, and his counterpart, Corey Potter. They have not thrown a lot of passes. Both have been accurate when needed. But in, in, in West's case, they haven't had to throw the ball that terribly much. They've had just such a great running attack uh, for them. And for East, of course, their feature back, Brian Scott, has done the bulk of the work. But Habel may be tested tonight because, as you know, West has a way of bottling up uh, run, running backs. You see Manny Stapak is coming there on his crutches, and uh, I know it's a tough day for him not being able to play his senior year, but he's here supporting the team. And let's go back to what you were saying. Exit Travis Blum Blumgren last year. Corey Potter steps in early on. The West fans are saying, you know, he's – He's got to really develop, and Petten and his staff have done a great job with Corey Potter to be very patient with him, let him just grow each week within the passing game. And I've seen him over the year really mature and really handle himself well. And he's going to he's going to make a difference in this game. He can run and he can throw the ball, and that's going to be probably the second biggest threat for East. One, they got to stop Armstrong, but two, they're going to have to stop Corey Potter. And of course, he's, he's really mature. The crowd is down a bit tonight, because, partially because of the weather, partially because of the fact last year they were both playing for a championship. 
It was a big game, S1 28 to nothing. And as you recall, you couldn't see beyond the fences. It was just, there must have been 10,000 people here. And you talk to people who, you know, uh, years ago, that, that crowd, years from now, that crowd would increase to 50,000. Tonight, the stands are full, but there is plenty of room around them. I'd say we're going to have a capacity crowd, but that's about it. It's, and I think that a lot of it does have to do with the weather. I think as people start realizing, hey, it's not going to rain, they will show up for the game. But that would hold things down. And again, East coming in, admittedly not having the greatest record. They have come up with some tough losses. Though. Well, they they started off a little slow. They had a nice winning streak. At one point, they're sitting at four and two overall. They've lost the last three games, very tough games, uh, late in the game. And I think right now they come in. And, you know, everybody's talking about West and they're talking about district playoffs. But you know what? You got to play this game. And I think he's realized that they're going to come out and give it their best shot. Well, right now, West wants to win, uh, obviously, for the obvious reasons, but also because if they do, it would appear that, barring any unforeseen circumstances, they would host Hatboro Horsham in the first game and avoid, I hate to say avoid, they would avoid the nemesis and let Downingtown uh, take the track and form the play. That's right. And I know Mike Patton. He doesn't want to talk about that until he gets past this night. Exactly. We rise for the national anthem. We'll take a break and be right back. Don't go away. Jewelry is a gift from the heart. And for years, Gem Jewelers professional staff has been at the heart of the matter with quality engagement rings, wedding bands, and diamond anniversary rings. Inside our beautiful showroom, you'll find the largest selection and the best values to make your special day or any occasion a treasure you'll remember forever. Plus, Gem Jewelers gemologist is always on hand to ensure the quality of your diamonds and gemstones. Gem Jewelers, the heart of jewelry, on Route 611 at Bristol Road, Warrington. I am the Black Knights. Classic pinball can be played in your home. It takes just one visit to TNT Amusements. We sell reconditioned arcade-sized pinball machines, video games, and jukeboxes. Unlike our competitors, all of our equipment goes through a comprehensive 51-point checklist. And remember, whatever you buy, you can trade in later. We guarantee that in writing. So try it before you buy it. Visit our huge showroom in Southampton. We're in the Yellow Pages under Amusements. We are back at War Memorial Field, Doylestown, Pennsylvania. You see Coach Mike Petten of CB West. It is East West football. A stirring rendition of the National Anthem just performed. Tommy, sorry you folks could not hear that, but it was a spectacular job, and we start a spectacular game. And as always, both teams on the field, you see them on the field rather than on the sidelines. As the captains come out, you see Manny Stapakis come out with the rest of the captains, four and four for each side. And, and that was Jay Herbert who sang that national anthem. I still have goosebumps. No, I'll tell you, there's nothing like a good rendition of it. It wasn't stylized, it was sung straight All forward. All right, gentlemen, my name's Jim about, Stevenson. Let's I'll listen to the toss tonight. of the coin. Michael Wine will be your umpire tonight. I wish you both a lot of luck. We're gonna call West White, we'll call East Blue. West is a visiting team. Who's gonna call the toss? All right, that's the head. That's the tail. I'll toss it, call it in the air. If I drop it, we'll do it all over again. Heads is called, and it is heads. Left, you have won the ball, one, and you're going to receive. You guys, what goal would you like to defend? Okay, you're going to put your backs to that goal. West, with your backs to this goal. Right there, that's good. All right, West, they will receive. Blue will defend. Guys, and best of luck to you tonight. And you heard it, Dave Armstrong called the to uh, toss of the coin. He called it correctly, and West will get the football. Larry Green will send his defensive crew out there. As you see, all the teams come to the middle of the field for the hand. This is great. This is great. This is, this is the best of high school football. You see them all out there at the hash marks facing each other. Tommy, you've been part of this. You know what it feels like. 
Tom doesn't have a whole lot of words right now. This always gets to him. This is a big moment. And they come forward. Larry Green and Mike Petton shaking hands. And a lot of these guys who have played football together many, many times, both with and against, you see the coaches going over to wish them all best. Because after all, it is the kids. The kids, a lot of friendships here, no matter what side of the field they're on. Now they break up and we are ready for football. It will be East kicking off to West. As they uh, get themselves prepared for final moments, always electricity in the air, always a, a big moment for that. This game just is extra special, East and West. That's all you have to say is East and West. And no matter where you are in Pennsylvania, you know who it is. It's a great tradition. Kids are going to tee it up tonight for the 29th time. Again, West comes in favored as always. I, I don't remember a, a year where East has come in and been favored. Uh, West has always been favored in the 29 games. East winning twice and a tie. We've seen some spectacular games. We've seen uh, pass a two-point conversion, win a game for for uh, West. We've seen East dominate a game and just miss a field goal at the end that would have been a huge upset. We've seen some blowouts. Most of the games, though, have been extremely, extremely competitive because, after all, as I say, this is East-West. East will defend the goal to our right. You see them going out with their blue jerseys, silver helmets, their white uh, uh, white numerals with red uh, piping. And uh, West, of course, in their road jerseys, white uh, uh, jerseys with the black numerals, the, black, uh, the killer bee look, the uh, black uh, pants, and the... Uh, Yellow piping and, of course, the gold helmets as well. So they will be uh, receiving the ball. It will be the first big test of the night for East. Okay, Jim. Teeing the ball up right at the 40-yard line. Back deep is Chris Ortiz. And we'll get in a moment. As uh, Abel will tee it up. And we are ready to go. It's a low kick. Oh, and it's picked, bounced around, and they scramble for the ball. And he's got it. It may be East. It is. It's Central Box East on the ball. He hits, he hits the ball real hard. It skips. The guy goes down to get it and ricochets off his helmet. And a real good run in his lane runs down is able to pounce on that ball for East. We think it's number 62, Steve Gonzalez. We'll have to check that. But there's a first big break of the game for East. And coming in, anybody that's here saying East has got to have a bunch of those breaks to try to stay in this football game. They start out inside the 40-yard line, just inside the 40-yard line of West. East will have the ball after the turnover. Man in motion, no backs. The pitch goes back to Brian Scott. Tries to turn the corner. He's got the corner. He's to the 30. He's to the 25-yard line and out of bounds. Brian Scott. They slotted him to the right side. Gave him a little running room. Didn't look like he had the corner. All of a sudden, he did. I'll tell you, Brian Scott, I got to see him uh, with Jeff Isey against the Council Rock team here that, that one night. And I'm telling you, this guy can dominate a football game. He can do a lot of things. The thing is, he can he can catch the ball, he can run the ball, and he's going to do things on special teams, punt returns, and kickoffs. It's going to be a tough night for the East uh, West defense to try to stop. Power eye formation. Scott the tailback. He goes in motion to the left side. Cable under center. Hands the ball off. He's got five. He's got seven yards and a big run by Tony Bavino. Tony Bavino, who's a great kid, great at work ethic. He's playing fullback. He's been hurt the last couple of weeks. He's going on guts tonight, Bob. He had a guy fall on the back of his ankles two or three weeks ago. He's got it heavily taped, and he's in there, that fullback, and he's looking for a big night. His last night as a senior for CD. That's why he's there. Ball moved down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Make it second down and about four. And again, the power eye. 
long count. The handoff goes to Brian Scott, cuts it outside. He's going to be close to the first down at about the 16 or 17 yard line. He'll be about a yard and a half shy. Make it third down in about two. And think of the philosophy. You're Larry Green. What are you saying to yourself? The same thing that Wes is saying to himself. I want to keep the ball out of the hands of Dave Armstrong. How do I do that? Have long drives, ground up the clock, and hopefully be able to score. The important thing is obviously get points. And right now they've had the opportunity that that uh, the kick off the helmet, they get the recovery, and now they're driving. But they've got to make points out. Third and two. Oh man, look at this! Uh, double wing, no man, nobody in the backfield. Now in motion goes Scott. It is a pitch to Scott. He's got two. He's got five. He's inside the ten yard line and out of bounds. And it's just, he's splitting the defense out. It's, a, it's not a bad concept. He's taking three guys and spreading out the defensive backs. He's given Cable an option to, option down the line with, with Scott, but he's given the ball to him right away. And Brian Scott has a lot of room out there now twice when he's run that play. And I did not get inside the 10 yard line, which is good news for East because they can get a first down without a touchdown. It's first and 10, the ball just outside the West End. Just in the way joined us. West fumbled the kick. Actually, it was bounced off and up by a man. A squib kick, and East got the ball. They had moved from there. Backs in the out. Handoff goes, and in the backfield, smothered in the backfield, is Brian Scott, and they might have gone to the well one too many times. Yeah, there's Buckley. He's a linebacker. He's he's reading that. He had a good guy. He come in uh, and filled, and Buckley comes in and makes a tackle. And West needed that. He has them on their heels a little bit after the turnover and the, the big runs by Scott early on. And they need some big defensive plays here. Again, for them, if they can hold East to no points or possibly a field goal, that's a good job at this point in the game. Ball back to the 12, so maybe second down and 11. Going out split wide is Rob Linders. Single setback, double wing formation. Wing to the left is Scott. He goes in motion. Back to pass. No, the pitch. And having trouble handling the pitch. Scott gets around one man, but he'll lose oh, yardage. And that play never happened. The pitch from Hable was just too high. He was fortunate to hold on to it. Had it been a clean pitch, it looked like they had some yardage. Yeah, he, he pitched it. He was a little bit behind. And Scott did a good job to control the ball and not let it get by him. And now he... Two big plays by West, third and what, I'm going to say 15, 16 well, yards here. The Tom. good teams, when you get inside, I hate, I hate that term, the red zone. When you get inside the 20s, the good teams have a way of making plays happen. That's what's happened so far. Now, again, the no backfield look. And we have timeout called by West and a smart timeout. Well, here's what's going on. They haven't seen this look for CB East, and they've gotten big yardage on it. And now on third down, Mike's saying, "I got to call these guys over and tell them what I'm, what I want." Because when they're calling this play, he's over there yelling what he wants, and the kids aren't getting That's it. it. So call timeout, bring them over, make sure everybody understands. And there you see him; he's got him in a huddle, as does Green. Well, now you get your guys in the right spot. Now you've only played, not quite. Uh, just a little over three minutes, and you use your first time out of the half. But there are good timeouts and there are bad timeouts. This is a good timeout because right now, this is a big part of the game. If they can get that first down or the touchdown, if you figure they get the first down on this play, they'll get the touchdown to boot. And then East has got all the air in their balloon, and they can go out there. They got the lead, they got the score, they got, everything's going right for them. They looked bad, did West, or ill-prepared for the no backfield, the double wing look. Now, Coach Petten and Carey take them out and say, okay, here's what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to combat it. Let's see if Green comes up with something different on this. Interesting here, Larry does not go into the huddle. He comes right out on the ball, and he's ready to go. Interesting. And again, similar formation, double wing to the left. And now motion by Scott. Play action by Havel. He's rolling up. He's under a rush. He's looking. He's strong. He's got a man. Throws it behind him. Intended for number 24, Dave Titus. Goes incomplete. And you would think that Ace would go for the field goal. He's on to the field. Excuse me, Dave Titus. I'm sorry about that. Tony Bevino, of course. Titus is playing for West, naturally. Jake Walker comes into the game to kick the field goal. And Hutt Hable did a nice job to really sprint, get outside that defensive end because he was breathing down hard on him. 
again, he's running to his left. He's got to try to make a tough pass, and Bevelino isn't able to get open. And this is a big no, it's not Walker on the field goal. Uh, it's uh, number 53. It's Tim Becker. He kicks it. It's boom. It's high enough. It's good. And Becker puts the, team, the uh, Patriots on the board. It's 3 0 CD East. Becker does a good job, keeps his head down, drives the ball through the goalpost. And tonight's a tough night to kick because the ball's wet. Anytime that ball is wet, it's going to be heavier. It's going to be harder to kick. There he does a nice job. He drills it. And you got to give East credit. They didn't get seven, but they got points off of the turnover or off of the, uh, the, 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 the rough kickoff. And now here you go. Now they're going to be tested. Can they stop that big offensive line of CB West? Now, they, they, let's see if they can. See, this is a nothing to lose situation. What we learned from earlier games to West is susceptible to the squib or the onside kick. Abington showed that in spades against him. It's been done a few times. So what they're doing, maybe that one was accidental. It was, it was a genius accident. If they're going to keep it low, they're going to make the up men uh, go after it. And then if, they, if West falls on the ball, well, so be it. A good move. And Abel will come up to kick off for East. Who leads 3 to nothing with 8.44 left in this first quarter of the game. Kicking off for the Patriots. Five, and that's big for East. So they got a little momentum. It's on their side. Now that what they got to do is try to keep it. And for West, they want to take it back. Let me kick it off. And this is, again, a squiver going right up the middle. And this time we'll go all the way back. And they've got it at the 20, the 25. A nice opening out toward midfield. And finally brought down at the 40-yard line on a great return. Tackle was made by Frank Laquani, but I believe that was Scott Warden on the kickoff return for Chris Ortiz. And Ortiz is a guy that early on he was going to be their was going to be their back. He got banged up early in the season and and has had to work his way back and he's starting to develop and get into that form that Wes wanted him to be in early on. But some guys that have picked up the slack for him at back is Scott Warden. Look for those two guys to complement Dave Armstrong tonight. Backs are in the eye behind quarterback Corey Pop. Hands the ball off to Warden. Warden's got five. Warden's got eight. He's out of bounds. And they made it look easy. Well, that's the thing. You made a great point there. He ran eight yards, and nobody even was close to being near him. And again, we talk about the domination of the CB West team. Offensive line that has done a tremendous job all year. You want to talk about Dave Armstrong. But Dave Marshall will be the first guy to say, say to me that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the yards just because of that offense. I don't get to those guys' names. You see one of these players studying your game. Backs come out split. Second down along, too. And it goes to Big Dave Armstrong. He's got the first down and a few more as it goes over midfield to the East 45-yard line. First down, Bucks. And I think Larry Green knew coming in that that was going to be his challenge defensively. Can he get enough guys in the gaps on the defense to try to stop this, this big offensive line? And so far he has. First down for West, their first first down of the game. They trail three to nothing as East took the uh, kicked off and uh, Squid kicked it, recovered the kickoff, took it in for a Becker 35-yard field goal. First and 10, ball just outside the East 45-yard line. And and uh, goes to Warden. Warden's got five quick ones and it'll be second and five. And they're getting big front, uh, punches of yardage on every handoff. Yeah, that time looked like East sent some linebackers. And that's what you'll do. You'll run blitz to try to stop the run. That time they had guys in the backfield, but they still weren't able to make the tackle. And Warden's doing a great job. He's just sitting right behind Dave Armstrong, that fullback, and getting what he can. Gain As of, is our piece. Gain of four on the play. You call it second down and six. And a single setback. Power left. Going behind that power is Armstrong. He's got the first down. Oh, great blocking by tremendous power. That spin move got him the extra couple yards, and I believe they will get a fresh four unless they say that you know they're going to say his knee went down about a yard, just not even a yard, maybe a foot shy of the first down. And 
He got hit at about two yards after he, he got into the line of scrimmage and just did a spin and basically fell another three, four yards. And it looks like they're going to give him a uh, third down and just maybe a half yard. Ball down now at the 30, just outside the 35 yard line, third and about a foot. And it goes, no, it's a keeper by Potter. He's got yardage. He can go all the way. Corey Potter will score. Touchdown, Central Bucks West. We talked in the opening. We talked about Dave Armstrong. We talked about Ortiz. We talked about Warden. But we also talked about Corey Potter and his poise and his ability to lead this team. And there you see it right there. Everybody's thinking Dave Armstrong. He gets stood up in the hole. But... Potter does a great job, play fake, keeps the ball on his hip, nobody's got it, gets outside the end, races down that sideline for six. That was a pretty call, well executed. West grabs the momentum back. Dan Patterson will try to left foot the extra point. It's high, it looks like it may be wide, totally wide. And he is so at 6 3, the point after is no good. That gets a rise out of the uh, CB East hopeful. Now, remember this, they get the ball back. Now, both teams have scored in their first possession and moved the ball fairly well. Let's take a look at this. There, there it is. You see, you see the play into the hole. They, they stopped Dave Armstrong. And Corey Potter, he had that ball on his hip. Ball in the outside hand. you got to love it. Nobody's there. Race to the end zone. What a great feeling. Touchdown. But it takes, you know, Potter... You don't know how great a passer he is. One thing he has done well is to really be deceptive in the backfield. He sold that play to the Patriots. They were looking for Armstrong. He stuck it in Armstrong's belly, put it back on his hip, sort of scampered around left in, and before anybody could realize it, he was out in the open. So it is 6-3. West now leads, and it took them all of two minutes and seven seconds to get that score. So... Six plays. Six plays, that's right. Six plays. Now they're going to tee it up all the way on the right hash mark. Now, don't kick the ball to Brian Scott. And you're going to see this all night. And it'll be interesting to see if Brian tries to move around depending upon where West kicks the ball. They kick it way up and they kick it far out and they're going to kick it. It looks like it's going to go out of bounds and it does. Great philosophy. I'll give you the ball on the 35-yard line and not give up a All kickoff yours. return. If you can get 65 yards, go ahead and do it. I'm not giving you a 45-yard return. Great, great philosophy. Don't let Brian Scott beat you on kickoff returns. So the ball will move up to the, uh, actually, it's out to the 30-yard line. Now they're going to move to the 35. It'll be interesting next time if they put Brian over there on that sideline and see if he can catch the ball before it goes out of bounds. But... It's a great thing. Don't don't let him beat you on those special teams because he can. Brian has three or four touchdowns on punts and kickoff returns as well on passes and also on runs. So he's very versatile. He can hurt you in many facets of the game. And Wes knows that. East will call timeout. Evidently, we're not straight on their calls, and Larry Green will talk to his troops. While we have a moment, reminder, the VHS copies of this and all other Suburban community television sporting events and events are available by calling that number you see right there, 215-345-5154, Monday through Friday between 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock, normal business hours. You know, Tom, you know, three or four people said to me, how do I get tapes? Well, that's how you get them. You make that phone call. You say, listen, I want to hear Tommy White once again. I want to see the Patriot walking with his hand on top of the I want to see the cheerleaders. Most of all, I want to see football. So call that number, you see it right there, the tapes are available. Yeah, how many times do you get to see or have something like that in your archive with your son or daughter involved in the high school program and be able to pull it out a couple of years from now and, and, and watch it? It's a great thing, and uh, every everyone should try to get a copy of it and uh, be able to keep it as a keepsake and show it to your kids someday. I thought they all get it because they want to hear me. Oh, well, of course. You're right. <laughs> At any rate. Timeout has been taken, and now we are ready to go. Both teams have two timeouts left. Justin Hable will lead his troops in a power eye look on first and 10 at the 35 yard line. West leading 6 3, 6.37 to go first quarter. Glad you could join us 
for the game. The handoff goes to Scott. He's outside. He's going to be dragged down. He didn't gain anything, and that was good pursuit by the West defense. Yeah, good job. 23. The defensive back comes up and makes a nice job. That's Greg Kinzel. Kinzel comes up. He stuffs the he stuffs the lead blocker. Keeps his outside leg. Keeps his outside leg out. Now watch this. Here's Scott. He's got the ball on the outside. Now here's the the fullback here, Acker. He's not going to get a good block here. See how that's uh, 35. You're going. That's Warden. You're going to see. Uh, there's Kinzel, also 24. Good job. Lots of hats on the ball for West. Dave Titus also in there. Second down just inside 10 yards to go. Oh, and a shotgun formation. And a high snap goes over Abel's head. He's able to hold on. He gets away from one tackler. He's going to lose yard. He did a good job to almost get back to the line of scrimmage. They tried the shotgun look and he almost shot it over his head. Yeah, he did a, he did a nice job to avoid a huge loss for East. Looks like he's coming up a little... Uh, Little gimpy there. He's coming over to the sideline to get the play from Coach Green, and now they got a big third down play. Yeah, they yeah, need they need they need a first down nine. here because they give the ball back to West. You know, after that that score, quick score, they're going to be under. And you yokes. wonder if that wet field isn't playing a little game with that snap. Or wet, and also actually you know, wet field leading to a wet ball. Third down, shotgun formation, trips left. Good snap this time. Got some time. Looks, he throws it over the middle. He's got a man and not quite able to hold on to the ball as it was thrown well, but R.J. White coming over the middle was unable to hold on to the ball. And it'll be fourth down, and we'll have our first punting situation, Tom. Abel did a nice job. He let R.J. White get out there, get into the pattern, hits him in the hands. I know he's going to say to himself, man, i got to catch that ball. Anytime it hits you in the hands, you got to you got to come up with it somehow. But West does a nice job to hold and get the ball back. And I'll tell you what, East has got to find a way on defense to try to stop him. Abel back at his 24-yard line. He will be punting the ball. Gets a good snap. And a nice spinner to be taken there by Ortiz. He takes it up. He's got some good yardage and gets it out over the 35-yard line before he's finally brought down by a host of blue shirts. But again, West has good field possession position for their second possession of the game. Let's give that offensive line of West some uh, some do here, Bob. Center Matt Politis, guard Adam Dumrod, the two twins, the John and, and uh, Joe Wilson brothers, and of course Ben Carver, the big the big man, and Greg Ward, the tight end. These guys have been yeomen all year. I believe Ben Carver's brother played for uh, North Penn. He North Penn Aaron. He certainly did. Ben, ben comes in, Bob. He's an 11th grader, 6'3", 300 pounds. Uh, you should see him in the weight room. Hey, the grocery bill for Carver family is big. Aaron was just as big. Man in motion. Handoff goes to Armstrong. He's got five. He's got eight. He's got 10. He's got 15 and almost breaks it. Dave Armstrong would not be brought down. Deep into the secondary. Gets it over midfield. Down to the 43-yard line of CBs. First and 10 for the Bucks. And you saw the East, two of the East players stand there just shaking their heads saying, it's like we can't, we, we, we can't stop them. It's just, they're just so overpowering right now. That offensive line of firing off the ball, holding their blocks, they're locking on a man and driving and letting Dave Armstrong get what he can. It's just, it's, it's just simple power in football. You gotta love it. Ball just outside the 42 yard line of East. First and 10 for the Bucks, who have not been able to be stopped so far. Split back here, the handoff goes to Armstrong. He'll get a couple, and then he breaks it outside, and he'll almost get the first down. Boy, Dave Armstrong looked for all the world like he was stopped after about a yard or two. Just kept powering him, and they think they made the mistake. They tried to tackle him high. You know, I you talk to people all the time. They say, they always they would come up to me, you know, how involved I am in the community of football. And they would say, Tom, why is West so good? And I'll tell you why they're so good. These kids are dedicated to the program. They lift three days a week during the season. A lot of coaches are against that. Well, somehow I would be for it, knowing the success that this team has. And the weight coach, Joe Hallman, you got to take his hat, your hat off of this guy. He does a great job with the kids. Back to split. Pitch goes to Armstrong. He's been the horse in this uh, series. He's got the first down. He's got about six or seven yards. And Tom, they are just, it's like they're running through, through a column. 
but yeah, it's you know it's it's tough. It's got to be tough for the kids out there on the field because they know they're they're giving it their all. It's just that right now they're just mismatched. Maybe what we can try to do is we go the size of the offensive line for West and the defensive line for East, and you'll get a feel for what the mismatches and the mismatches are. The lightest comes in. He's 225. Gumrad's 255. The Wilson brothers are all 250. We talked about Carver. He's 300, so you can tell we got a big offensive line. Jumping offside is East, and it'll cost him five more. The lineman for 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 uh, East, you got 67, Colby Umbrell. He's 210. That's not a bad size guy. 68, Coca. He's 235. Defense. Five yard penalty. But as you say, it's the condition. It's the way they play. The strength coach. Joe Hallman gets him in the Dead three ball. days a week. They Coachman. are still strong defense. Five-yard penalty. And that, that's key, Tom, to have, I believe, in the, in the weight training program because come November, you're a tired athlete. And if you are going out there just working out, playing, practicing during the season and not working with the weights, keeping that muscles toned as the pitch goes to uh, – Ortiz and Ortiz will get maybe two or three. If you're not toned up and continue to ready to play, A, you're going to be injury prone, and B, you're just not going to be in the best shape. And you're shaking your head vigorously yes to me on that. And the interesting thing is, Joe Holman, two years ago, under John Quim, was the weight coach at CBE. Well, that's why I led this up to that, Tom. <laughs> And, I had uh, heard that, and I had and Joe, heard that from somebody standing very close to me. And, John, and uh, Joel Holman was uh, gracious enough to come over to CB West, and they graciously took him, and he's done a great job. And uh, what what a difference it makes when you're you're hitting those weights during a season. Big second, deal. second and four, a nice carry by Ortiz. Actually got uh, got a yard. So second and four, and now carrying the ball is Armstrong. He's stacked. He may be short of the first down. The East fans are cheering it, but he's still gained two or three. Well, he's going to end up third and just short. And it looks like maybe we're going to get a measurement. Yeah, they, but they got measure. they got two plays here to get a yard. And I, I'll tell you what, it's going to be, unless they turn the ball over, tough not to, not to get it. See, you've got to take chances, and that's the key here. You've got to take chances. You've got to take chances. They'll stretch it. He's going to, I don't know, that, that's, oof. he's short by about a quarter of an inch. You got to take chances and hope that maybe you're right. They took a chance on Dave Armstrong uh, the last series. It wasn't. They were wrong. Corey Potter made him pay for that mistake. But if you're right, you have to wrap the guy up. Dave Armstrong can be brought down, but it's like chopping a tree down. You got to hit it down at the bottom. You got to come up and you got to wrap him. You got to wrap around those big, big, powerful legs of him and vice him. You got to wrap and vice and if you don't, he'll run through any arm tackles that you try to uh, and I, I've said put this, on. I've said this before. I have only seen Armstrong stop one time in his high school career, and that was two years ago against North Penn. They were able to bring him down. Now, in all fairness, he was injured in that game, too. But they tackled him low, and they kept uh, crunching him down. I have not seen him stop that much. I've never seen I haven't seen him stop the other than that. And he's not easily stopped. Third down, very short. Everybody in tight. Armstrong, you got to think he's going to get the ball as Potter calls him number. It is Armstrong. He barrels in. Doesn't get much, but he didn't need much. He's got the first down. Now you wonder, the running play works. The running plays are working. You wonder, does Pat take a shot and say, Corey, let's see if we can put the ball in the end zone, do a little play action freeze, see if we can get the ball out the window. Well, I'll tell you what happened today. Hatboro Borgia played today. You know there's a lot of Hatboro people here tonight. Mike Petten, if he can, he's going to keep all the special things in his pocket and run power football and try to beat East with the simple stuff and not show the whole playbook. Well, it is a passing look, a single setback, and it is play action. No, he's going to roll. Potter's going to carry it himself, and he is cracked after about two yards. A nice open field tackle on Corey Potter. Yeah, a lot of blue hats there. Up, up to make a tackle, number 62 for East. That's Steve Gonzalez. Nice job, takes him down. And probably, other than that that, that second down and uh, to get the first down there was probably the shortest gain on first down for West tonight. I'm not sure if we have an injury or we have a... Uh, a equipment. 
an equipment situation. They say short game, and yet you look at the sticks, and they're about three, four yards downfield. You run that three times, you got yourself a first down. Yes. I think it's just equipment. You can see it there. Acker's trying to fix the strap. Well, you can see right there the right. laces actually tore away from the shoulder pad. They're going to they're gonna end up having to send him off the field. Although now you got the official the West in there. West is ready working. to go, and they're, they're, they're going to send West back to the huddle. Benton wants to move along here, you know. Well, he's he's saying, look, the guy's got an equipment problem. Get him off the field. Yeah. You know, you, you you can't hold up the game. If it's a minor thing, you can fix it real quick. That's one thing. But it's a welcome break too, as you see the scoreboard there. One twenty-six to go this first quarter. Six to three, West. And right now, West is really in a position to kind of really take a hold of the momentum of the game. I got to tell you, other than the rain all day long, this is probably the best weather we've had for East West game in years. It is warm. It, it's warm but not hot and the wind is moderate it's it's almost perfect football weather so second down of who the equipment repair has been made second and we'll call it seven backs are split and the handoff goes to armstrong he's got three and he's stacked up there and they stood him up nicely on that play acker at the bottom of the, uh, the pile yeah he came up he hit him good but again it's amazing how strong dave is even a good stick, you, you got to say that they pretty much held him on that. He got three yards. Yeah, so did. instead of being third and if he had no gain, third and seven, he gets third and three. But the reason was the line surge gave him those three yards before he got hit. You got it wasn't it. like he had hit the line of scrimmage and moved forward. He got stacked, but he had his three before that. So make it third and about three yards to go. Ball resting at just inside the 10-yard line. Back split. Man in motion going right now. Pitch goes to Armstrong. He's got the corner. He turns around, makes a nice move, and he may or may not have the first down as he stood him up. A great job out there by the linebacker. He's able to get up under Dave and stand him up and try to drive him out of bounds before he gets the first down. Now it's fourth and one, and I'm going to tell you, it's pro watch this. Here's Dave. It's a quick pitch to the outside. He's got his fullback leading. He's got the ball in the inside hand. That makes it tough on him because he can't shed. Now watch this guy come up. We'll try to get his number here. Bam. That's Brian Scott. Man to man. What a great shot there. In comes Acker to great help out. Strength. Great strength by Scott. Fourth down and about a yard. Full house backfield. Goal line offense for, for West. Almost jumping off his east. Handoff goes and crushing in. And I think he's got the first down on the turn. I think he's got it. They're going to measure, but I think that he's got the first down on the turn. It depends on the spot, but I'm going to say he's got it by a good length of the football. I'm watching a guy down there in a rain coat giving the sign for first down. He, and I think he's got it. Oh, yeah. And they do. They, they're not even going to measure. They're not even going to measure. Here it is, Dave. He's just into the line. Power. Look at all the blue shirts. There's Acker on the bottom. He's furiously trying to get him, get his power under him. The 42 did a good job for East there, too. Troy Lavinia and just wasn't able to take him down. And on that note, we have completed the first quarter of a very interesting game. East taking an early lead, only to see West come back and take the lead. And there are poised to possibly score again as we come back. We have finished one quarter of play. West 6, East 3. We'll be right back. Looking for the perfect pre-owned car? Come to John Altamari Auto. With over 125 quality pre-owned cars in stock, you're sure to find the car you want at the price you want. Choose from luxury cars, vans, sports cars, imports, and four-wheel drives. Every car is warranted for one year with current inspection, plus Altamari has a service center on the premises. Bad credit or no credit? Altamari gives you instant approval with as little as 500 down. So, visit our friendly sales staff to help you get the car you want. John Altamari Auto. Located on East Lincoln Highway, 100 yards from Reedman's. We are back at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania for the Battle of Doylestown, the game. Central Box East, Central Box West here on a very nice night it's turned out to be, although it rained all day. Bob Friedman along with Tom White, no rain right now. Just a reminder, by the way, the slow motion replays tonight are sponsored by 
Sereno's Pizza located on Route 202 just south of Del Val College in New Britain. We thank them for that. Had some great slow motion replay so far. Ball goes to Armstrong. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Bye. Touchdown. Dave Armstrong would not be stopped in the line. Surge was fantastic, Tom. Just fire off the ball. You get down there. It's the it's the H and Hut. You're firing off the ball. And if you're not moving on the H and Hut, you're, you're going to be a second behind his team. And the surge, as you said, is, is just tremendous. And they just pound it in there. It's a beautiful thing. you got to love it. Power football. Let's see, they're going to go for the uh, two point, uh, the uh, one point rather. Pat Dan Patterson will come in. His first one looked like he just didn't turn his body all the way and it went wide left. Snap good. The kick down. The kick is up and it looks to be perfect this time. It is. And with just four seconds gone in the second quarter, West has extended the lead to 13 to 3. And it was just power football, smart football. But again, I can't talk enough about how how dominating the offensive line Bob has been all year. And there it is. It's 13 to 3 West. And again, interesting on this kickoff. What will East do? Will you take Dave uh, Brian Scott and put him over in that corner and hopefully let him catch the ball before it goes out of bounds and just West call timeout and move the tee and try to kick it away from him? Could be a very interesting thing here. Good shot of that East helmet. 10 play drive, 58 yards for the touchdown. And Armstrong carried it. That was Armstrong. He caught Armstrong carried it 10 times on that series. So that's a stats have been handed. So 10 carries by Dave Armstrong, 58 yards. He was the go-to guy. And we will have a kickoff for CB West. Patterson will tee it up at 40. And as you say, Tom, it will be interesting to see. Now he takes it all the way to the right hash mark again. You know, with that much strength on the left side, you wonder if you wouldn't try an onside kick once in a while. Just to make it interesting. Well, that's interesting. What they did is where they, they have the tee lined up. Now they got a guy, Tony Bevavino, who's their fullback and a, and a bona fide run the ball guy where they have the ball lined up. But it's another kicker who takes it. And look who's got it. Yep, that's right. And then Scott's got it. He breaks through the middle line. He's got one man to beat. He's just brought down. Oh, my. They tried a little trickery. They showed Patterson. Had a different person kick it off. Scott still got the ball and made him pay. Got out to the 42 and was one step away from breaking. You could feel the whole east sideline take a breath. Oh, like that when he caught the ball and he took off. It looked like he actually ran into the back of his own guy. Here Let's it is. Take a look at the Sereno's uh, pizza replay. Does a nice job. He's, 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 he's trying to find a lane here. And now right up here, he's going to try to make a cut. And right here, you're going to see him run that. No, that's uh, Corey tackle. Potter. Corey Potter. And you know West means business if they have their starting quarterback on a kickoff. Team. Power eye formation. Scott goes in motion out to the wing right side. On first down, handoff goes and going absolutely nowhere is Tony Bevavino. And a good job, number 73, John Wilson, one of the brothers out there, John and Joe Wilson, comes from his defensive line spot, finds a seam in that offensive line, and takes Bevavino down. He never had a chance to square it going nowhere. It loses six yards. So second down and 16. They call it second and 15. Looks more like 16 to me. Ball now moves all the way back to the 37-yard line. You got to think Hable soon is going to have to start putting the ball up near a little bit here. They tried to decoy Scott. Now they have backs in the eye. Scott the tailback. Wing left. Hable does that little counter play and getting for a three or four or five, six yards. Tough running on the play by wingback R.J. White, who came from his end position, and gets about seven of those yards back, make it third and about nine. Actually, wow, they got more than that. He actually got about ten, so you make it second and about third and about seven. He really, he, he got dinged pretty good. He's off the field and actually ran off, fell on the sideline. He's still down. But there's a little, little payback. He was a guy early in the game on third down over the middle. Ball hits him maybe a, something he should have caught. There he gets a little payback. A nice run. Great gutsy run by him. 
puts Easton in, in a doable third down. That's a play now. that West has made famous over the years. That though. little inside scissors, that scissors. little inside buck play, they call it. Um, he isn't able to break it all the way, but now they got Ryan Scott split out. He can be dangerous out there. Shotgun formation on third down, third and about seven. Has time. Now he'll throw the little screen pass, and it's knocked out of the way as the on-rushing lineman, number 74 on the play, and that was uh, Jeff Cahill, came in there and appeared to knock the ball into the air. The screen was set, though. I'll tell you, that's the beauty about watching CB West, the little things that they do well. They're the defensive lineman. He's not quite to the quarterback. He goes to throw. What does he do? He gets his hands up. Little things in, in their game that makes a difference in why they win year in and year out. You saw it right there. So that big kickoff return goes for naught as they go, they go three and out, and Justin Hable will stand at his own 35-yard line punting the ball. He gets it away. Another nice one. Little end over end. It's going to go out of bounds. No, it's going to spin out of bounds. Finally, at about the 23-yard line. So not as good as punt as we thought or initially it would be, kind of off the side of his foot. And West will start at their own 23-yard line. Well, Ortiz is a very good uh, punt returner, and East knows that. So the little bit of West medicine, they're going to try to kick the ball away from him, not let him catch the ball in the air. That's actually a good punt. It is, but this is a big series for the East defense. This is the series where they either stand up and make their stand now, or this game could get out of hand. Well, I think what they got to do is maybe put a couple more guys on a line of scrimmage and run blitz. Force Corey Potter to have to throw the ball or run the ball himself. Try to take that inside stuff away from West, and let's see if they can do it. Full house backfield for West on first down from their own 23-yard line. It is Potter carrying the ball. He's got five. He's got seven. He cuts out to the left side, spins around, got the first down, and Corey Potter snakes his way through for 11 yards. First down, CB West. Great job. He's just very patient, Corey. He gets outside. He's he's not racing out there full speed. He's looking for he's looking for a break. He got out there in front of Armstrong and the rest of the gang. Finds a scene, little spin, little cutback. 12 yards, first down. He's reminiscent of two other quarterbacks. We see the surrender replay. He almost lost it there. They're shackable. He gets a block. Armstrong's up in there. He gets a block. Corey Potter, nice job. Cuts back across the field. Only 42 there for East is able to slow him down. Troy Lavinia, nice job to slow him down and eventually make the tackle. How much does he remind you of Matt Baggett? you got to love Corey Potter. The, the work ethic of this kid uh, from the time he's been in the, the program, He's one of the strongest kids on the team, which is amazing for a quarterback. And Tra but Travis Blumgren was the same last right. year. Spent a lot of time in the weight room. And he's durable, and he's strong. He's, he's got good stamina, good leadership, and he's poised. And, and his maturity as a quarterback is just every week has gotten better and better. Well, he reminds me of both Baggett and Putty Gilbert when Gilbert played the quarterback position the one year. None of them were the world's greatest passers, but they did a lot of things well. Do all the little things That's well. That's right. Single setback, double wing to the right side. Handoff goes, no, it's Potter calling his own number again. He's got about three, and he'll be about a yard and a half shy of the first down. As we come to 9.15 to go in this first half, West leading East 13-3, to three, and they are on the move again. Again, good line surge, fire off, lock on a man, drive the feet till the whistle blows. Corey's looking for a seam. He's going to break one of them big. He did early in the first quarter. He had that little keeper, nice job on his hip. But he's tonight, tonight I think it's going to be Corey Potter's night. He, everybody's keying on Dave Armstrong, and Corey has a nice opportunity to play off of that run and pass. So far, he's done a great job. Third and short, we're in Armstrong territory. And this Armstrong who barrels for the first down. Right over tackle. No, no fooling around. Meat and potatoes between the tackles, and he's there. Safety's making a lot of tackles for uh, East tonight. That time on a tackle, number 26 for East. Uh, Shandalark, he's uh, come up, try to wrap Dave Armstrong. Even when he comes up and makes a good hit, and he's he's still dragging him for a couple of yards. Actually, that was 28. Correct. I'm going to make correct that. That was Mark Notwick. Not right. Did a nice job. But you can only take a beating so far, so long as a defensive back from a guy that size. A little bit of confusion here. We have a fresh uh, tailback in the game. 
And it is Warden with a ball. Warden breaks it five. He's got 10. He's got 15 yards, and he's out of bounds. Scott Warden comes in fresh. Excuse me, that's Chris Ortiz comes in fresh, and he gets the big first down. Breaking a lot of tackles. They give you that kind of mutter-type approach, and all of a sudden they sneak Ortiz on you, and he, he's got a burst, or Warden. And that all of a sudden, Ortiz. that was Ortiz. That was Ortiz. And I'll tell you what, he's, he's going to make a difference on his team late in the season because he's got that speed. He's got the breakaway speed, and he's the type of kid where he's worked hard. He's got he's got it in his head that hey, I got to prove to myself that I belong on his team because early on they were counting on him, and he got hurt. And I know Ortiz is saying to himself, I want to I want to contribute, and he's gonna. Well, it's like Ricky Waters carrying the ball, carrying the ball, and then suddenly you go to Charlie Garner. And it's a change of pace. Ortiz has got tremendous speed, as does Warden. And you're used to being bowled over by Dave Armstrong. Armstrong. As great a runner as he is, he can even be a better decoy because of the fact that everybody's going to gang up on him, which is why Potters had those big runs, which is why Ortiz was able to break it to the outside. Everybody's king on number 34, Tom. Yeah, you got to. That's, I mean, that's the way football is, is played. You got a key guy, you got to take him away first, and then you got to go to that second guy. And the offense is going to play off of that, and they've done a great job. Some of the guys in the, the secondary for East, Kreider, uh, Steve Kreider, he's a backup quarterback. His dad and I, Rich Kreider, play together at East. So I, I saw him coming into the game. It was nice to see Rich. He's really psyched for his kid to have a big night. Uh, also in there, Matt Collier. He's the other D-back linebacker for East. These guys really have a test tonight trying to tackle Big Dave. On first and 10, the ball for 36 yard line. It's Potter. His first pass of the game, and it is complete. Getting it down inside the 25, 35 yard, 25 yard line to about the 21. Let's see who had the reception on that. That was Ortiz, I believe. Yeah, it was Ortiz. And all he does is he sneaks out in that flat, tries to find a little seam where he can get by that linebacker and that cornerback. Potter, nice job. He drills it in there. And Ortiz gets a little extra after the catch. And this West team, Bob, has just been so impressive. They're hitting on all cylinders tonight. as they That's their first pass of the game. It is a completion. He gets it down to about the 22-yard line. Where it'll be first and 10, 7.58 to go in the half. 13-3, West with the lead and the ball. Now the pitch goes to Ortiz. He's got about three on the play. It looked like no big game, but he's got about three or four because, again, that offensive line is just doing the job. That time, good job. And I, I think it's number 65 for, for East, uh, Sam Lamb. Does a nice job to, to knife through that that quick side pitch or that weak side pitch and make a play and take them down for three yards. And that's a big defensive play tonight for, for East because West has been just chunking it off. And, and still, well, West got three, three on the catch. Right, exactly. Second down a long seven to go ball inside the 20 yard line. It's Armstrong. He's tackled the line of scrimmage and still managed to get three. There's no penetration, any defensive line surge at all. It's all West. And as you said, before you even get to him, he's got three, four yards. You can tell he's been playing football. That jersey is now, now looks like a Lehigh jersey. It's brown. <laughs> Third down along about three yards to go. Ball now at the 15, just inside the 15-yard line. And again, it's Armstrong. He carries. He's going to be, I think he's going to be shy of the first down here. I think he's going to be shy. I think he's going to be very close, but I think he's about a half a yard shy of the first down. Tommy's given the first down signal, but I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm skeptical on this one. Yeah, they're going to bring. They're going to come in with a measurement here. While they measure, we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Don't go away. This is the best way not to get your license on the first try. And this is the best way to get video Wee! games. No, yeah. Sega Channel, over 70 hot games a month for your Genesis machine. No lines, no limits, no late fees, just unlimited play on your TV. Sega Channel, less than $15 a month. Call your cable company now. Sega Channel, the only way to get it is to get it. <laughs> It 
was short of the first down, so they are fourth and just inches, and everybody's in tight here. You got to think it's going to be Potter or Armstrong. It's Armstrong. He barrels three. He's got the first down. That's hard to stop. There you see Dave. As you said, look at that jersey already. We're we're uh, six minutes to go in uh, second quarter. He's he's full of it right now. But you know that's that's just so hard to stop. You know you almost want to say, hey, if you, you take your linebacker and you have him guess the count, and you have him run up, and you hope that he's right. If he's wrong, he's offside. But you figured. You're not, you haven't been able to stop him on, on yardage before. How are you going to stop him for half a yard? So you take the chance. You come up. You hope that you can crack him behind the line and bring him back or knock the ball loose. Try to strip break. it, yeah. First and 10 now. Man in motion. And it's Potter carrying the ball. He's got five. He's going to go into the end zone. Touchdown, Central Box West. And it's 19-3, to three, just like that. And again, Potter, he shows that little fake, keeps the ball on his hip, does a nice job, gets upfield, reads a block, cuts inside it, and finds a seam into the end zone. Touchdown, CB West. 19-3, going for the extra point. 5.45 to go here in the second quarter. And after that kick, initial kickoff, bounces off the helmet of CB West. East goes down, gets a... The field goal gets on the board first. It has been all CB West. Now they're going to go to the sideline. I got. I got to think they're going to go for two here. This is a situation where you're up by uh, 16 points. You want to get it more than uh, you want to make them have put at least three scores on the board. Uh, and you know, two touchdowns and a field goal, so they have to score really three touchdowns at that point. With a time of 16. And I don't think he's going to call him off to the side just to kick an extra point here. So they call a timeout right now. There's Larry Green. I saw him pumping his arms, going, come on, guys, let's stay in it. We're down, but we, you know, we get a whole, we still got half a quarter to go and a whole second half. You know, maybe we'll catch a break. We get a big play. Let's keep it up. There's the, you see the East, East uh, coaching staff. There's Chris Rittenhouse, Coach Marmer. Guys have been here a long time, doing a great job for the uh, the East program over the last couple of years under Larry Green. Which Marslin there, of course, played for West. Yeah, Marslin, Billy Marslin. Billy Marslin, was actually yeah. Part. So now, now they're going to kick the extra point. So they talked about it, and then decided to go for the uh, go for the one point. So it will be Dan Patterson who will try and left foot it, make it twenty to three. Snap is low, but the hold is good. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Patterson makes it 20-3. to three. Does a good job, keeps his head down. Bam, drills that ball right through the uprights. And now it's, now it's kind of a must move the ball to try to keep yourself in this game because if they, if they come in here, kick off three plays and out, give the ball back to West with an opportunity to score again before the half. That's that's a tough mountain been, to climb. They've been trying some cute things, and the reality of it is some has worked, but most has not. What they have to do now is go to the well with the, with, with the one who brought them to, uh, as far as the season. Brian Scott has been used in many cases, slotted out. He's been here, he's been there, he's been decoyed. You've got to give him the ball, Tom. you got to make him the workhorse now. Got to. And Scott will go back deep. And West is going to talk it over how they want to handle this kickoff because they tried a little chicanery. They showed Patterson that had uh, had another person kick it off, and Scott they made the mistake. They kicked it too far. Scott got the ball and almost took it all the way. So Dan Patterson will tee it up again. Corey Potter, who can kick, is standing alongside him. Ah, you look at the uh, skull and crossbones. And you know, it's amazing how coaches uh motivate kids and we'll get back to those uh stickers on a helmet it's a big part of this west program the, the history of that patterson let's see who does it is it going to be patterson or is it going to be potter it is patterson two-step approach and he gets it they got accomplished what they wanted is uh, oh but carrying the ball out for nice yardage they accomplished what they wanted to but mike taylor got the ball and he got some big yardage that's a good aggressive run. He gets catches the ball in the air, doesn't let it hit the ground. 
good burst up the field. And we, well, East has decent field position, but we said it earlier. Got to get some they first have got downs. Got to get points. They got but, to score. But namely, got to get points. We we're talking about those uh, stickers on a helmet. We'll get to it. But the big thing is the Axe Master. And maybe we'll get a shot of another helmet. Maybe we can catch that end with the Axe Master. Power eye formation. It is Scott in the tailback spot. It is Scott with a carry. It's Scott with about five, and he spins for seven yards, and that's what you need to do, Tommy White. That's a little bit of their own medicine. Just get a bunch of guys on the line of scrimmage, hope you can fire off the ball, and get Brian Scott up in that thing, just between the tackles. Don't try to go outside, and hope Brian Scott can find a seam and break it. And that's a big run on first down. He gets seven and a half yards. I had a coach years ago who said to me, you don't try and make a thoroughbred a trotter. Obviously, he got the horses, but that was another story. You've got a guy who can run, and you don't make him just dance around and decoy. you got to give him the opportunity to carry the ball. He's got to be the go-to guy. We're going to show the power eye look again. It's second down and about three. Ball moves out to the 43-yard line. Power eye with, again, Scott in the trigger position. Abel has it. He'll give it to Scott. Scott has a little trouble, managed to get maybe a yard there, and that was just all jumbled up at that point. But again, they're doing what they need to do. They've got to get the ball to Brian Scott. He'll get about a yard, make a third and two. Yeah, really here you got two plays possible, even though you probably don't want to go for it on fourth down. I think East might have to consider if they can get real close here, they do not want to give the ball back to the West. No, I think it's, yeah, I'd rather, let's see him get the first down, but if they don't, I'd rather see him pin him deep for the punt. Yeah. Because you get the ball away here. I mean, unless it's fourth and inches, that's a different story. Let's see what happens here. The power eye formation. Able on a long count. Hand off around the left side and getting outside, but not getting the first down was Brian Scott, the pursuit. Fantastic for West. Good job. The thing you love about defense is if you see the whole defense flow, do a good job to stay along the line of scrimmage, and as the back squares the shoulder, you step up, you square the shoulder, you pop them. And they had a lot of hats on the ball. Now, the crowd doesn't like this, but they're going to punt the ball away, and I could not agree with Larry Green more in this situation. Got well, fourth and about a yard. They have shown they've not been able to move the ball. You punt the ball away, or maybe fake punt, you don't know, but you punt the ball away, Hable can kick it pretty well, you try and stick him back and try and hold him back there. I have no problem with this philosophy. And it's a nice kick. Coming up and getting it, his knee touches the ground and it'll be stopped there at about the 22, 23 yard line. So they put him back, not as far as they would like to, but again, if they don't make that fourth down, yeah, you can say, well, that's a loser's philosophy, possibly. But if they don't make that fourth down, West has got the ball at three minutes and 24 seconds, and instead of having to go 70 yards, they've only got to go about 40 at that point. They're all hopped up, and that's tough. Yeah, it's a good call. I mean, it's a good, safe call. You're down, you're down by 17 points, which is three scores. But again, you, like you're saying, you have a whole second half to play. Don't don't totally go in the tank because you like you said you don't make that there that's a huge momentum really uh, in the favor of west with an opportunity to get a quick score now they have to hold west here that goes without saying however on the on the first handoff that is to scott warden and warden's got about five i don't believe west has had any negative plays from scrimmage everything has been crushed yardage east has not had an opportunity to, to throw him for a loss at all time. And it's a tribute once again to that offensive line of CB West. Just power football, basic stuff between the tackles, drive to the scores, and let the backs run hard and get what they can. And the officials again are having a little problem. Again, I think it's Acker. Acker is having all sorts of problems with, that, uh, with his uh, shoulder pads. At halftime, he's probably going to have to get a new set on. I think that's accurate. It's twice they've worked on it. Some of the guys either on defense, maybe we haven't mentioned tonight, 99, Derek Ray. He's had a few good tackles tonight. We've talked about Lavinia. He's had some real, real nice plays on defense. Mark Notwick, 28. He's, he's made some plays. Ryan 
Lincoln Lee over there, the other cornerback, doing a nice job. We talked about the linemen, 67 and 68, Umbrell and Toka. All those guys fighting hard, trying to trying to get some penetration into that West backfield. So far, haven't had a lot of success. All right. Now we have a flag down. And uh, let's see what we've got here. A little bit of meeting and greeting while I'm here. Full start. Offense. And that's probably the first negative thing that's happened to West tonight. And I'll tell you, East is going to take that penalty. Uh, they're going to they're going to accept that penalty. They, oh, yeah. they, obviously, they don't have a choice, but that's the Full that's start. a that's a big play for them. Um, Kelly, now I will tell you right now, if I'm the defensive coordinator, I will say one thing. Two words, watch Potter. He has been dangerous here on the option. Full house backfield, power on. Pitch goes to Ortiz. He's got the yardage, he's got the first down. I'll tell you, there's a lot of blue shirts down on the ground. That means the white shirts are knocking them down. They just get out there. Potter does a nice job quick, reads the end, pitches to Ortiz, a burst up the field by Ortiz, and he's got the first down. And again, even after that penalty, you think, okay, East has grabbed back a little momentum. Maybe they're going to be able to play off of that. But West comes right back at him and gets a first first, first down. And made it look easy. Made it look that's, very That's easy. scary. That's real scary. 155 to go in the first half. West has the ball at their own 35-yard line. You've got to think they've got to put the ball in the air sooner or later. They've only thrown one pass. It has been completed. A little confusion in the backfield. Split backfield right now behind Corey Potter. Potter, play action. Back to pass. Now he's got to run a little bit. He's going to move. He has nobody nowhere to go. And still gets a little bit of positive yards. Looks like he's going to be sacked. He's got about an inch. What great poise on his part. He's trying to get the ball deep to the split end. The safety for East, Scott, does a great job. As long as the quarterback has the ball, you get deep. Brian Scott was as deep as anybody in the field, but here's the poise of Potter. He has the poise to say to himself, I don't have a play. He eats it, and he still gets something out of it. Here he's going back, belly to, to Armstrong. Five-step drop. He's going to step. Look how much time he has. A lot of time. He's sitting there. He's sitting there. He's trying to read that safety. Nothing there. There's his poise. Puts it in. Says, I'm going to see what I can get out of it. And he gets a couple. Now he'll roll to the left. He looks, he's got a man. Is it too long? Yeah. It was, he had him out there. Ortiz was out and he was in the seam of the zone. And he just put it a little bit too far for him. So it'll make it uh, fourth. Make it fourth down and east, uh, excuse me, make it third down. I beg your pardon. Third down and eight. East is uh, doing the job so far, but they got a break on that. I'll tell you, yeah. We're. we're couple looks across the booth here today right on that play he hits Ortiz and stride on that play it's a Big touchdown game. there was nobody there was nobody between him and Ortiz in the end zone uh lucky for East uh Corey, Corey Potter's just not able to get it to him and a big break for East. 51 seconds to go in the half. Ball out through the 37 yard line third down eight yards to go man in motion it is Potter he rolls left he's looking now he's going to run the ball. He's got about three, four yards, and he's brought down East. Well, hold here. And a big defensive series for CB East. They got a break on the pass that went awry, but uh, the uh, tackle on the play was by Colby Umbrell, who made the uh, nice play around the end. And East West, for the first time, tonight, I do believe, will have to punt the ball there, fourth and about four. Colby Umbrell, great job. Great lateral movement, able to pursue down the line of scrimmage, fight off a couple West guys as he goes, and is able to get Corey Potter before he's able to break up into that seam and get big yards and possibly a first down. And a first for CB East tonight. They held West, and it's, as you said, it's going to be their first punt. And with three seconds to go in the half, West is called for delay a game, and you wonder, you know, I don't think they will punt the ball. I think they'll run it here. Absolutely. Do not kick the ball to Brian Scott. They have all the time in the world, even here, if they decide to go for it. Okay. The clock's going to run out. 
Well, if they go for it, they're going to try some wide running play. They're going to stop shy of these sticks. By the time they go down, it's going to take three seconds to run the ball. What I, would, got to, what I would do here, Bob, is I'd run a, a run a regular play, maybe a pass for Corey Potter. He, like you said, even if it's a long play, he rolls out. Try to get positive yards out of it if you can. Yeah, you know, well right? taken. Just uh, you know, run a normal play because you're only going to get one play. Don't kick the ball to Brian Scott because he can quickly. Well, put there's it too many things up. that can happen on a kick. A bad snap. Yeah, and now exactly. time will run out on that. A block punt, but they can pick it up and take it in for a touchdown. They get the ball to Scott. So I think they're just going to go under center. They're going to run some type of wide play to the right side. They're going to carry the ball. By the time the pile is taken care of, or they'll give it to Armstrong, let him muscle, 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 and then they'll go into the halftime. Because they only have three seconds, as I say. On the east side, as soon as they hear the whistle blow, they got to go like timeout right away, go for one quickly. And they are coming up to the line of scrimmage, and they do have the split backfield. And now East is going to call. Do you think this was a tie ball game at the end of the regulation? So East will call a timeout. So it's three seconds to go. You go back and forth and back and forth. Now I've got Greg Betts is doing the game for one of the local radio stations, looking at me and shaking his head. He doesn't know why, but hey, I'm sure Larry's got a method to his madness here. Well, I, I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to give his team any kind of edge he can at this point. He's down three scores. Anything he can think of to try to distract West, he's going to try to well, do One it. thing he's also probably telling him is, look, when you tackle, as soon as you tackle him, come up with a timeout signal. If we can get it with one second to go, we can go. We're close enough. We can go for a Hail Mary here. Ah, hey. There we are. Got my golf shirt on. Gee, it makes me want to wish I'd play golf, you know? <laughs> good day for golf. There you go. Well, yeah, it was a real good day for swimming underwater. So, here we are. Now, i got to run a play here because neither team can call a timeout at this point. <laughs> It'll be fourth down in about five. Now, what East has to be careful about also is they don't break it out in the secondary, too. And it is a wide play, and that'll do it for the half. As Potter will carry, he'll get some yardage, but the half has come to an end. Started out well for East as they took the opening kickoff and covered a swim kick and took it in for three points. But it's been all bucks since then. The teams go to the locker room. It's CB West 20, CB East 3. We'll take a break and be right back. Do you have exercise-related foot and ankle injuries? Foot injuries affect the knee and various parts of the body, so why not let the doctors of Buckingham Foot and Ankle Center help you? Dr. Michael Greenberg and Dr. Maurice Levy have over 40 years combined experience participating and treating athletes like you. Buckingham Foot and Ankle provides foot care for people of all ages, from pediatrics to geriatrics, including diabetic, sports medicine, general podiatry, laser surgery, and wound care. Don't suffer another day. Come visit our conveniently located facility. Call 489-5100. Would you like a better paying job? Professional Career Development Institute can train you at home in just a few months for one of America's 15 top career opportunities. Whether your dream is to be your own boss or to work for an employer, call for free literature on any one of America's top career choices. Train at home for the job you've always wanted and earn this nationally recognized diploma. Take a look at PCDI's exciting career opportunities. Medical transcription, paralegal, veterinary assistant, computer training, fitness and nutrition, interior decorating, electrician, child daycare, conservation outdoors, travel agent, locksmithing, medical dental office assistant, home inspection, bookkeeping, accounting, or get your high school diploma. Call for free literature on the career of your choice. In the U.S. and Canada, call 1-800-494-9732. Get free literature on one of these 15 careers. That's 1-800-494-9732. Earn more money. Call 1-800-494-9732. Call now. It is 
this homecoming here at War Memorial Field for Central Bucks East as we are at halftime of the Central Bucks East, Central Bucks West football game. The game, as always, Bob Friedman along with Tommy White, the East cheerleaders uh, entertaining the crowd as the West Band is about to play. Tom, it's been the stats have been all CD West. Tom McKenna, good enough to keep stats for us tonight. Let's talk a little bit about those stats. They tell the whole story. Well, the thing is, all the names on the list, which dominate CB West, I see a name Armstrong, I see a name Ortiz, Armstrong 6, 16 for 81, Ortiz 5 for 38, Potter 8 for 71, uh, you had uh, Warden in there 2 for 12, 202 yards, but the names that aren't on there are the names of Belitis, of Dumrod, the Wilson brothers, the Ben Carvers, and we keep talking about this offensive line. What a great job they've done. But it is just from total domination, if you ask me, in the first half, CB West. East has done a great job to hang in there to keep the, the score relatively close, but it's been all CB West. Brian Scott's have a, had a few big runs, but other than that, it's really been a dominating game. Well, East kicked off, as you said, kicked the swift kick, got the big break when the ball hit the helmet of the West player, came right back to East to get the ball. Scott has a couple of big runs. They ran some formations that West was not familiar with. Scott's got some big yardage, and then when they got inside the 15-yard line, suddenly West said, ah, that's about as far as you're going to go, guys. So they, uh, they went to Becker, who booted a 35-yard or through, and it was 3-0. Now the problems began for East because, see, in football, once you score, you usually have to give up the ball, and the other team gets to run it. And the problem here is that West just was virtually unstoppable. They did not punt in the first half at all, although they were fourth down at the end of the first, uh, the first half. They didn't have to punt. They didn't come close. They got the ball. The drives, the drives. They had a 58-yard drive. They had a 60-some-yard drive. And there were no big runs in there. There were no 30-yard runs, but they were all 5, 8, 10, 11. I think the largest run we had was for 14 yards in the first half. By Potter on the first score, exactly. And you know what? It's been really kind of fun to watch West because except for that one motion penalty that they have, they've been error-free. They've, uh, they've executed offensively, defensively, and it's just been a kind of joy to watch as, a, as, as football uh, junkies that we are. Uh, to come in here and watch CB West and all the years that we, we've watched them and see the execution, it's kind of fun. I, I was saying to somebody earlier in the week, it's almost like it's one thing you can count on in life to have CB West have good football teams. It's just year in and year out. They're taxes. good. Yeah. yeah. Dex, death and taxes and good CB West football teams. Well, yeah, as you say, when I said it please at the beginning, this is the 29th renewal. A lot of things have changed. The one constant has been Mike Pettin. Mike Pettin has been walking the sidelines. This is the 29th time he'll be he's out there for this game. And the thing about it is he has built a program here that other schools want to model themselves after. The latest school to want to model themselves after it, North Penn. And what better way to do it? Get Junior involved. And, you know, that's going to be interesting. And you and I have talked about it. We talked about the weight program in the first half. That same thing will be instilled there in North Penn. And you can bet in the next couple of years, you'll see the difference in the teams that are there with the strength and the conditioning. And everybody wants to know what the secret is. The secret is you, it's fundamentals. You coach the little things. And you coach the little things August 15th. And they start August 15th, and they coach them, and they rep them all the time. And then you have the weight program yep. to add on to it. And they, those kids are working year-round, and that's thing, the difference. The one thing I've always said about CB West football, and there's one word that says it, it's precision. It's precision. One thing, when we were on Sportsline the other week, we had uh, um, uh, John Price was talking about it, and he said, this is the way they do it. You do it this way. This is how you do it. From the time you're seven years old all the way up, you do it the Patton way, you do it the CB West way. It's like baseball the Dodger way football the cb west way there are schools out there who do not colleges who do not follow it as well as this high school does they are a model for doing it. north penn has built up their program why was north penn called the comeback kids this year with a team that quite frankly was at best an average team now the wind has gone a little out of the sails the last couple of weeks but they really were a team that lost a lot of players off of a not so good team last year 
and they've won six and lost three at this point. The two games they lost were heartbreakers in the last couple weeks in the Chamonix and Norristown. And you got to say, and I say it all along, with Patton Jr. and Dick Beck and that crowd over there, their strength and conditioning better than, better and better each year. The bit, One of the big games in Southeast Pennsylvania in years to come is going to be Pep and Pep. You got it. It's going to be fun to watch. But, you know, we, we come back to this game here in, this, in the second half, 20 to 3 West. East East has got to keep their heads up. They got to take what's got them here. You said it earlier. Get the ball in the hands of Brian Scott. Hopefully they can have a couple more good defensive stands and try to take the ball away from West. The one thing they haven't had happen for them, which they were hoping for, they got it on the opening kickoff, was a turnover. They're going to need some turnovers and some luck and maybe some big plays out of Brian Scott to possibly have uh, an opportunity to pull this one out. But I'll tell you what, I give them a lot of credit. These kids from East haven't given up. Uh, they haven't, and they get the ball to open the second half. And that's where we will be when we come back right after this break. Don't go away. We're only halfway through the game, East-West, and we'll be back. <laughs> Now, eliminate the drudgery of no-win workouts. And cut your workout time in half. With a revolutionary fitness flyer from Guthy Ranker, other machines can create painful impact on your knees and joints. But the fitness flyer has been biomechanically engineered to work with your body's natural movement. For a smooth workout that's virtually zero impact. And when you're done, the fitness flyer quickly folds down and rolls away. For easy storage in a closet or under a bed. Try the fitness flyer risk-free for a full 30 days. For just four easy payments of only $49.99. And these special bonuses are yours just for ordering. Don't walk. Don't run. Don't ride. Just fly with a revolutionary fitness flyer. Call now. Credit card customers call toll free. Your fitness flyer is backed by a lifetime manufacturer's warranty. And with our 30 day money back guarantee, you can try the fitness flyer in your own home risk free. Call the toll free number now. We are back at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Bob Friedman along with Tom White as we have finished one half of play in the game, East versus West. West with a 20 to three lead, The East will be getting the ball. Clean, let's keep it that way for the second half. We still wish you both good luck. We still got a ball game here. It's gonna be blue, your choice. Want the ball and what goal you guys wanna defend? Okay, you wanna put your backs that way? Hey, I'll use you. I've never used a guy I've run. Manny's to Bacchus. As he used him for the top, so we have a first year there. A first year, the referee and using an man on crutch, boy on crutch, to uh, designate. And Manny walking off the field. Of course, Manny would much rather be involved in the game in a more, uh, much more, be, be involved much more in the game. At, Unfortunately, the injury will not allow that. So East will get the ball. And again, we will have that exciting kickoff. And it has been exciting. Every kickoff has been an adventure. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I, I, if they kick it this side to this East sideline, they got Bevavino right on the sideline. Then they got Laquinto. He's next to him. And then Scott. To the other side, we got a guy 83, and that's uh, Ben Adler. Now, Ben's probably not the, the runner that maybe Bevavino and uh, Quinto and uh, Scott is. So I, I would guess that Wes is going to probably try to go over there to that side. See, I, 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 my feeling is you try to kick a ground ball. You make them pick the ball up and make them go after it. You pick it to the, to the side opposite, opposite uh, Scott. Of course, Green may, may have them just do a flip-flop as the ball is about to kick. But you try to kick it to the far side and you try and keep it on the ground instead of putting it high up in the air. Or you got that big hole right in the area there. You try and put it in that hole, screw it over the top. So what he did the first time, kick it out of bounds. They're not going to fall. They're just going to keep it straight up. And here it comes. And it does go to Scott at the 10-yard line. He's to the 20, head of steam to the 30. 
The 35 breaks outside, and he'll be stuck at the 37-yard line. A good return, but it was well defended. Number 11 for West. Good job. Drew Trill Tillman. Drew Tillman, her uh, second-string quarterback, down there on kickoffs. Does a nice job take Brian Scott down. And it's as if the West coaching staff at halftime said, oh, the heck with it. We're just going to kick it off. If he runs it back, he runs it back. And they told the kickoff team, just hold your lanes. And they did. So, the ball at the 35-yard line first and 10 for CBs. First play of the second half. Backs are in the eye. It is Scott at the uh, tailback position, and it is Scott with the ball. He's got a couple. He's got about five yards. Gets it up to the 40-yard line. It'll be second and five. And this is what they've got to do. They've just got to blow off the ball. Give Scott that little bit of a crack, and he can get four or five yards in every time. Yeah, he gets up behind his uh, fullback. Looks like uh, Lavinia's in there at fullback now. And he, he runs up in there, gets what he can, tries to break it to the outside. West does a good job to take him down after five. Now that's... Uh, uh, I think Bevavino's in there. Yeah, Lavinia's playing tight end. And uh, Bevavino's in there along with, uh, I think that's R.J. White. Yeah, power eye. Second and five. It is a handoff. It is to Scott. He's got the first down. He carries it up the middle field. And again, they just run... Simple plays. They want to get positive yardage. They've got to get something positive going. They had a great start to the game, moved the ball, and then it just sort of all stalled on them. Now they need to get back to this. West, on the other hand, knows if they can stick Scott once, it puts him in the hole. The problem with the East is they have got to get big positive yardage in just about every play. Well, good job. They come out here two plays, first down. They only had two first downs in the first half to West's 11. So they got a good Both stop. Both on the first series, I might add. Power on. Hand off. It's going to have some trouble in the backfield. He spins around. He'll, he'll lose yardage. He did a lot to lose to. But again, that was a case of West just pushing the blockers into the backfield. Brian Scott had nowhere to go. I'll tell you, Scott made yardage. He's going to lose two, but he could have lost four or five. He gets the extra yardage. Great hats on the ball again by West. Kinzel there, Titus there, and really punished them into the sideline. Uh, looking to come back. Looked like they tried to have like kind of a counter draw play to Scott that time, and West was all over it. By the way, the wind has picked up substantially, and it is in East Space right now. Second down, about 11 after the loss of one on that carry. Again, a wing back field, and we're going to have movement on East, and it's going to take him back five, and this is what kills you. Yeah. Yeah, because you get first down. You run a play, maybe a counter, doesn't work, and now you're going to get motion most likely. All right. Dead ball, false start, offense. So that's now it's, it is. yeah, instead of being second and 12, it's second and 17. You offense. haven't had a lot of success. Repeat second down. All night, and now you put yourself in a hole. Not good. No, and that, that's your problem. Now, Scott, they can do a lot of different things. Because Scott can't, you know, he, now he comes out slotted the left side. Let me see if let's see if they motion him or they just go into a straight passing pattern. It is a shotgun, so it's obviously a pass situation. But he runs the ball on a quarterback draw. He's got some nice yardage. Got caught behind his blocker. Otherwise, he would have had much more yardage. He gets back past the original line of scrimmage, so it makes it a very makeable third and nine. Very good call. They kind of got West off balance on that. I, they haven't seen Havel really run the ball. And he did a nice job to get in there behind his fullback. Now watch this. It looks like pass. He looks upfield a little bit, and he's running all the way here. Tucks the ball away. He's going to get behind Bevavino. You see Bevavino right in front of him, clearing away. Also there, 75, doing a nice job. Marini, and Habel gets it back to a doable third down. Back to pass, Habel. Over the middle, intercepted. Intercepted. Let's see who it was. Is that... That's 44 Shackleford. Yeah, that's Shackleford on the interception. And he threw right there in the coverage. I don't think he ever saw Shackleford. Shackleton is it? Shackleton. Jack, I'm Jack, Jack, Shackleton. Jack Shackleton. Jack Shackleton. That's a that's a mouthful. He does a good job. He sits back in his coverage. They, they try to run Scott as we get the end of it there. Just on a slant pattern, Shackleton stayed back as the ball's thrown. He breaks on it, is able to pick it off. He falls down. He doesn't fall down. It could be six. That's right. He was going forward. He was losing his balance as he intercepted the ball. And so East, after moving the ball, again, shoots himself in the foot with the, with the uh, penalty, has to get themselves in a passing situation. Abel throws the interception. 
Backs her in the eye. The handoff goes to Warden. Warden's got five. He's got 10. He's got 15. One man to beat. And a touchdown saving tackle down at the 34-yard line. Otherwise, Scott Warden is gone. Yeah, Brian Scott does a nice job. And Warden's almost able to spin out of it. Scott comes up, wraps the arms, takes him down. But I'll tell you what, that turnover really hurts East now. West back with momentum, driving, big run, first down. And East, you, East gotta gotta have a big play defensively. You gotta have a turnover. They gotta start taking play. some chances. Yeah. They got to take chances now. You gotta stunt some of those linebackers, get them up in the gaps, maybe force somebody to uh, drop the ball, fumble the ball. Handoff goes to Armstrong. He's got five. He's got ten. He's got fifteen in there, tearing off huge chunks, and that was right up the gut. Yeah, right up behind the center, Velitis. Just power football. Give him the ball. Dave does a great job. You see those ball balloons getting away. They just stay right behind that offensive line and get what he can. Much like the game may be starting to get away from the red, white, and blue at this moment. They have to stop them here. And so far, two plays, 28 yards. All on the ground. First and 10. Backs are split. Wing to the right side. Quarterback, Corey Potter. Potter keeps the ball. Throws a little pass, complete. I believe that's Ortiz. I see who it is. That's Warden. It's Warden on the catch. So he'll get about nine. So that's the first. The one positive is they didn't run the third straight first down. I don't think they got a first down. That'll be second and very short. That's the only positive you can take out of the East because right now West is just munching yardage up like it's popcorn. It's this is a fun down. Second and one. You have the opportunity maybe to go play action here. Put it on a hip, maybe have Potter roll and keep it, and throw off of it. Let's see if they uh, try to have a little fun on this play. I think you just play it simple. But they don't. They roll to the left. Tommy was right. He gets in, and he's going to lose yardage. No, he's not. He breaks away. He's going to score. Corey Potter, it looked like he was going to be caught in the backfield. He was wrestled away from the... From, from the tackle, it looked like a loss for sure, and instead it's a touchdown for Central Box West. A great run by Corey Potter, who so far is the player of the game. Is that a great night? It, it was as funny as we as, as we see the play. It was almost like a East player turned him around and said, wait a second, Corey, you're going the wrong way. He actually got a piece of his shoulder pad, turned him around, didn't make the tackle, and Corey had a straight line for the end zone touchdown. Great heads up. Patterson extra for point. the extra point. Long enough. Straight enough, and it is good. So it's 27-3. to three. And That quickly, West goes in. Here's the replay. Let's watch this now. He rolls, he's looking for a guy streaking over the middle. Tries to set, he says, ah, I don't have any room. Tries to get up. Now watch this, 68 spins him around, says, wait a second, you're going the wrong direction. He says, okay, I'll go this way. Nobody's there, touchdown, CB West. And great that, poise. More than great. anything else, that, I mean, it's great poise, but it's also luck. He was faced in the right direction. He came out facing in the direction where there was nothing but pay dirt ahead of him. If he's facing the other way, he's a dead man. Scott Tokas, 68, gets him by the shoulder pads, does a 360 with him, isn't able to bring him down. When he lets go of the pads, there he is. He's got a straight line for the end zone, runs it in. For CB West. And, uh, as you said, we watched those balloons kind of sail off into the night, the red, white, and blue balloons. And now, and 27 to 3. A lot of time in the second half, but a huge mountain for the And now you got to see, let's see who's kicking off for it. It's a different kicker for West. Uh, no, it's still Patterson. But the point is, now they're just going to kick it away. If Scott returns it, Scott returns it. And they do what they kick a squibber. And it's taken by an up backer from around the 30 yard line. He's out to the 35 to the 40. A nice run back to about the 40 yard line. And number 41, that was Frank Quanti. So they did kick the swimmer, but the Quanti did a nice job picking it up. Once he caught the ball, he had about 15 yards of running room before a West player would get to him. And he made the most of it. So they get it out to about the 43 yard line. And East will take over there. And again, Every down now is a must-do down. You can't fool around here. The down 7.41 to go in the third quarter. A little confusion right now. I think the officials are trying to... What the story is, the delay, they're conferring about something. It seems to have gotten squared a little bit. 
the East will come up to the line. And no one in the backfield, only quarterback Abel. Scott is, is slotted out to the left side. Now he goes in motion. A little play action. Abel, he's throwing downfield for Scott. Does Scott catch it? No, they're going to say it's incomplete. He caught it, but uh, then he juggled it as he was going out of bounds and the ball is incomplete. Abel threw it into a better coverage. Scott would have had to bring a miracle man to come down with it. He did come down with it, but he came down out of bounds. See it again. Yeah, rolls right, turns back. He's trying to get Scott to free up the sideline, but watch all the white and gold helmets in this play. A lot of people on the ball. Scott goes up highest point, but you can see right there, he's he's off the field. Even if he catches it, he's going to be out of Great bounds. athletic play nonetheless. To come down with that ball. He did drop it. He had it knocked away, but now the backs are in the eye. Second and 10. Strong side left. Abel, fake counter, he'll roll to the left, and he's in big trouble. Tries to get the outside. Now he's got the corner turn, and he'll turn it into about a two or three yard game. Nice play by Abel because he was under all sorts of pressure there. He gets about two on it, but uh, looked for all the world like he was going to get buried in the backfield. Good speed. Did a nice job to get outside containment. He, he got two, but he really ran 32 because he started out on this hash mark and the field's 50 yards wide, so he ran a good 25, 30 yards and only gets two yards out of it. But here they are, they're third and, third and eight, a long eight, and they, it's a doable third down. And I think the problem also is the running plays that are slow to develop. You know, with Scott, you want to take a bang, boom, hit the line, hit the hole, go quickly. And, and, and they're trying some of these slow development plays and you're giving West a bit of a break. Now, again, shotgun formation, back to pass. It's under pressure, and his arm is hit. It was going forward, so it'll be an incomplete pass. But again, tremendous pressure by C.B. West, and East will have to punt the ball away. Greg Ward, defensive man, he comes in hard. Again, it's the little things. Justin Habel goes back to pass. He's just a fellow throw. Ward's not quite to him. He knows, look, the only thing I can do now is get off my feet, get my hands up in the air, try to make a play. He does it. He gets a piece of it. Lucky for East, there isn't a guy there playing tip drill to catch that ball and take it the other way. But they're going to have to give it up and give it back to that machine. Abel back to punt. He'll be punting into a pretty good wind right now. And they put the big rush on, and they almost got to it. And the kick is off the side of the foot, way out of bounds to see where they mark it. They're going to get a real good position. It's walking up over the 35 Able to the 40 to yard line. Out. Oh, baby, they're going to get it right about the 39 yard line. So, a real short punt as the pressure was there from CB West. Abel got it off the side of the foot. It goes out, and West will get great field position right out at their own 40 yard line. As if they needed it. On a 38 yard line, West takes over first down and 10. 27 to 3, 715 to go in the third quarter. Now, I'm just looking. The clock is really moving slowly because, actually, they scored with 7:47. Is that would that be true that they, unless I'm missing some of the clock, only 30 seconds have run off that clock? Keep an eye on that clock. See if it's running properly. The pitch goes back to uh, Ortiz, and Ortiz has got five or six. That clock is running five. It's just a passing play, and then. Uh, yeah, so they were quick play, so they weren't able to, the clock did not move much. So we're just under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Six yard gain on the line, no time, and again, big positive yardage. They had him in the backfield, a couple guys hands on him, just not able to get him. Ortiz, again, that conditioning, that strength in the legs, able to break the tackle, get up field, get the extra yards. Big play on first down, good six yards. And now West, here's another fun down. You're second and four, you got an opportunity Play action pass, perhaps, and maybe get somebody streaking down the field. Now, a little bit of confusion here. They're going to get the playoff, and they don't. They don't. It's going to be a delay game. And even with the big lead, you look at Mike Pettin on the sideline, you're going to see a very unhappy man. He doesn't like to see this happen. There was confusion. He does not like to give up yardage without the ball being snapped. There's a dead ball. Second delay a game. Offense. It's second down. Well, you see Mike Pettin on the other side. You're going to see Pettin and Carey both very unhappy. And there they are right there. There's uh, uh, Dan Carey. Carey and Mike Carey in the gold. And, and the other coach, there's, there's Mike Pettin to the, the right of Dan Carey. 
Uh, I'll tell you what, they don't like they don't like to have penalties. It really drives them. Uh, not, Second not and good. nine, and the handoff goes to Armstrong. Armstrong's got the penalty yardage back, and he stretches, and he'll get about six back, making a very makeable third and about three. Number 52 is a play. You've got to be frustrated. If you're CBE, you get the penalty yard, you just hand it off, and they, boom, they get it right back. Yeah, and, and that's what happened. They, I, I started to say the only two really negative yards that East has had against them, as you see an East helmet on its side, some guy leaning on it, has been on penalties. And right after the penalty, when they got a little defensive momentum, bam, West gets, it, gets the yards back. So it's third and three, long two, actually. Backs are split, wing to the right. Handoff goes, getting the first down, and then a little bit more is Dave Armstrong. Armstrong gets it up to midfield. That'll be a first down for C.B. West. Now West, I think they're content. They're too. I hate to say it, they're up four scores. Uh, possibly here, they punt. They can drive down and punch another one in. You might see a lot of And, and I hate to say it, but it's not a case of of how or what, but how oh, much it is. And West really has this game under thorough control. They put it under wraps with the early score in the in the in this quarter, and they got the ball again. East has not had an answer since early in the game. Potter with that little counter. Spin move and getting some good yardage, about five or six yards on first down. Let's see who that is, is that that we're keys? Lavinia on the tackle. He's had a nice defensive game for East. He's playing right in the middle, linebacker, and has done a good job. That he's the guy that's making that hit four or five yards down the field. If he gets any kind of penetration or line play, he might be able to make the plays at, at two yards. But right now, that line surge is just so great. It's just dominating, dominating yeah. line surge. I mean, the, the East line is just being swallowed. Second down, five. Ball now at the 45-yard line of East. Play action. Potter doesn't see anything, so he'll run. And finally, we have a no gain on the play. Potter had no uh, good defensive coverage as they were trying play action. East didn't bite on the play action, and Potter had nowhere to go, so he will actually lose a half yard. That's the first negative yardage non penalty of this game. Uh, Lavinia and Acker on the play. West is going to pull a timeout here at the 405 mark, up 27 to 3. And I'll tell you what, this is a, a very big down for East, momentum wise. If they can hold him here, get maybe get the ball back, not give up the score, maybe a more of it. Don't forget the but a great timeout by Patrick uh, and his, his crew. The what they had see there is the past the couple plays, they've seen some confusion. A penalty. On that play, they saw a breakdown in the line, and they do not want complacency to take over. The team that they got down by 24 points, and knows just as easily could score quickly at something happen with Brian Scott there. You never know. He's one step away from scoring every time he touches the ball. So they want to make sure that they are still all on the same page. This is a third and five. They lost yardage on that because there was confusion on the offensive line. Blocking assignments were missed. Now they got to sit there. He's going to say, look, let's all get on the same page. Third and five. Let's make it happen. Let's get this ball into the end zone. And then we can worry about what goes on beyond here. Yeah, West, West wants to get another score. I think it's important for him, uh, you know, in the, just in the scheme of the whole uh, district playoff, really convincing win for him. They put it in here. Um uh, You'll see some uh, nice white shirts out there after that. Single setback, back to pass is Potter. Potter looks, throws it underneath the Titus and threw it too hard. What Just a sick play. Troy, Troy Lavinia, though. This kid has played a great game in there at linebacker. The guy from West tries to sneak over the middle, and just as the ball arrives, so does Troy Lavinia. Sticks him, separates him from the ball, and East falls. That's a great job. That is a big job by East. A good job by East is they take advantage. They make the defensive plays, and now with four minutes to go in the third quarter, they have an opportunity. It's back to punt for the first time in this game is C.B. West. 
confirmation. Of course, Scott is back there. And Jarrett for CB West. Jarrett gets a punter all beauty. What a beautiful fair catch call for the ball bounces into the end zone now. And that one is a big punt. And again, you got the wind in your back. If you look at the flag, you didn't get a shot of the flag. That was down. At, just dead down at the beginning of the game. And now you can see it is blowing all over the place. There it is. The wind has picked up substantially. The center is going to get windy tonight. It does two things. One, it will dry out the field. Two, it's going to create havoc for the team that's going into it because it is a wind that's right in CBE's face right now. As if they had, didn't have enough problems. They're staring into the teeth of a wind that right now is about 25 miles an hour. First and 10 on the 20-yard line. Backs in the eye. Hable, the quarterback. Tailback, of course, is the ever-dangerous Brian Scott. But the handoff goes underneath and carrying it for good yardage and a nice stick. But carrying it for good yardage before he's finally brought down on the plate was Tony Benavino, another guy who's played a real nice ball. Game. You know what? It's interesting. He had a run like that early in the game. And they Seven haven't gone back to it. He is a fast kid. I saw him play as a sophomore. He was he was actually the quarterback. Here he just gets into the line of scrimmage. Watch this hit at the end. You're going to love it. Right there. Stand him up. Or That's Potter. 23. Was that it's, Potter? No, Potter. it's either Potter or uh, Kinzel. I think it was Potter. Great stick. you got to love him. And again, there's that strength training that makes a difference. Power eye. Scott dances. And he, you don't oh, dance against C.B. West. Scott. They give negative yardage. Some stats in the first half we didn't go over. East in the first half, uh, 27 yards for Brian Scott. The rest of the team had no more than seven yards uh, as they only had 36 total yards rushing. Unsportsmanlike conduct. And here's frustration. Frustration starting to set in, so that's really what's coming down here. But in the first half, Armstrong at 16 carries for 81 yards. Potter, 71 yards, or 38, Warden, 12, 202 yards in the first half, and they have uh, that ball, yes. unsportsmanlike yes. conduct, blue, yes. got it, and what's happened is, in the second half, they've just continued that, they First hit the ball down the field, uh, Armstrong well over 100 yards at this point, and the frustration started to come in, you don't know who the unsportsmanlike conduct is on, but at this point, they've done 24 points, uh, they're not moving the ball well, and frustration does tend to start to set in here. So now, to make life worse, it is third down and 17 with the penalty. Man in motion. And off underneath the Bevavino, he won't get much, so now they have to kick into the teeth of a tough win. Fourth down, Hamel, and you got to wonder if they won't just come in all the... Trying to really blow in on uh, Hable. Tackle made by number nine, Brian. We have 220 to go in the third quarter, 27 to 3. Oh, look. Look at the scoreboard. They've given uh, they've given East a free 10 points. How about that? Yeah. Justin Hable is much for the Patriots. So the scoreboard operator needs to work on it. It's 27 to 3, not 27 to 13. punt is away. It's going to be a short one. They'll let it bounce. It takes an east bounce. So a nice punt by Hable gets it out over the 45-yard line. Hable's kick down the scoreboard's by number three for the Patriots and Jake Walker. Much to Tom's Once chagrin. Over, first down ten. Well, it was interesting as he was rolling the clock. It went from 13 to 23. To 53. The so they're actually ahead for a second. <laughs> And then it went back. You really three. go for the little victories, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have fun. Hey, that's the name of the game. West with the balls. First team still in. Ball inside the 45-yard line. Backs are split. Delayed handoff goes to Ortiz. He's got five before being tripped up. And he doesn't get tripped up. He's got about 20 because there's nobody beyond there until you got deep in the backfield. So Chris Ortiz will get a game. They'll move it back again to four, make it second down and six. Ball resting just at the 40-yard line. They need to get to the 34 for the first down. Backs are in the eye now. Up back is Armstrong. 
almost jumping off for the East, but they get back on. Oh, and a blown play there. And Potter's going to lose yardage. And again, Petten is not going to be happy with that. Lavinia, there he is, 42. Mm -hmm. Troy Lavinia having a big night. Lavinia, I believe, is only a junior, Bob. 6'2", 215, 11th grader. Actually, an interesting story about Troy Lavinia's dad, John Lavinia, was one of the uh, coaches at East in the early days of East football. Uh, John did a great job with the kids, uh, eventually uh, got out of coaching. I believe he's a uh, arts teacher in the Central Buck School District. Uh, he's probably proud of his kid tonight. Having a big night. There's a good reason to be proud. He's played a fine ball game. Single setback. Wing, double wing to the right side. Back to pass. Potter rolls to the right. He looks. He pumps. He throws. Intercepted. Intercepted by C.D. East. So East, let's see who's got that interception. It appears to be number 12. Steve Kreider. Steve Kreider on the interception. So it, Steve Crowder, his dad's got to be proud right now. Yeah, that's great. All he does there is he was kind of hidden. I don't think pa Corey Potter ever saw him. He just slid into that pattern, catches the ball, does a nice job, brings <laughs> it back, and that's a shot in the arm for East. They haven't given up, and here they got an opportunity. They got to make a couple big well, we'll plays. We'll talk about you know. that in a moment. Let's let them run this play because it's something interesting for the non, you know, the person who's a casual observer of football, a question might come up. Backs in the eye. <laughs> And back off oh, on a blitz coming through. Is that Dave Titus? No, it's number 74. It wasn't a blitz. That was just good for a pursuit by Jeff Cahill. I think somebody just flat out missed the block. That's right. He came straight up the field hard. Nobody, it didn't look like anybody blocked him. He just he just takes the Hable down. And the and third quarter has come to an end as Hable is going to be talking to Larry Green. We're going to take a break. Fourth quarter just about to get underway. Don't go away. You see the score. We'll be right back. Jewelry is a gift from the heart. And for years, Gem Jewelers professional staff has been at the heart of the matter with quality engagement rings, wedding bands, and diamond anniversary rings. Inside our beautiful showroom, you'll find the largest selection and the best values to make your special day or any occasion a treasure you'll remember forever. Plus, Gem Jewelers gemologist is always on hand to ensure the quality of your diamonds and gemstones. Gem Jewelers, the heart of jewelry on Route 611 at Bristol Road, Warrington. Well, you're looking at the view through a CBE's player's helmet right now, and the view is not a good one as they trail 27 to 3 as we enter the fourth quarter. Bob Friedman, along with Tom White, here at the annual CBE CB West extravaganza. And a beautiful night for football, it's turned out to be. East just had a big sack by West, and they hand the ball off to Scott. Scott gets the lost yardage up, and then some. Brian Scott breaks it away. You just got a feeling. Sooner or later, he's going to bust one open. He has been about a step away a couple of times. And I'll tell you, if they give him a crack, he'll get 10. I'll tell you what, this, the, uh, the West guys, their jerseys get dirty. It's tough to read the numbers. Somebody comes up from their safety spot and really delivers a blow. Uh, Scott, though, big run on second down. And they got a doable third third down here. See third down and about six right now. Trying to capitalize on a big interception by Kreider. Backs her in the eye. And West jumps off, and I'll tell you, <laughs> I got to take a look for Carrie. Carrie's got to be talking to himself. I'll tell you one thing paint will peel in that locker room. At the end, not, not after this game, but during practices this week. One thing John Price said. Encroachment is when there's a lot of lack of discipline is that the players really don't want to go to practice the following, week, especially with playoffs coming up. Mike Carey just looking around. And, you know, you want Mike yelling a lot because when Mike is standing there silent. With a, Encroachment. Defense. And when McCarry's sitting there just with that look on his face, you just you don't want to go near him at that point. 
Mike knows what championships are about. He not only was uh, played for the, the West, but he was captain of the national championship uh, Pitt Panthers. I hate to say that being a Penn Stater, but, you know, hey, it's been years. Great team, though. It was a great team. So on third and short, Abel calls his own number, and he gets the first down. <laughs> Good job, good call. You just you just going power football, trying to drive drive the defensive line for West off the ball. Chris Young did a nice job pushing his man off the ball. He followed Young and the center up and uh, get the first down. So East again has an opportunity. Not going to say they're going to come back and win this game, but they get they have a chance that you know little victories, winning a quarter, winning a series, doing what you've got to do here. Backs are in the eye behind Havel. Twenty-seven to three, West comfortably in control right now and the handoff goes to Scott oh and he's buried on a great stick but number 33 that's Dustin Pichotti I believe we had another Pichotti ball played for uh for West but this is Dustin Pichotti comes up along with that uh Buckley watch the backside Buckley number nine he's the downside defensive lineman East is pulling out of there, and they teach you to follow. Here he comes from behind. See number nine? He follows as the guy pulls out of there. Is able to get him down. Justin Pachotti comes in to help. Justin Pachotti's a sophomore, Bob, and he's listed in the program 6'3", 220, sophomore. You're going to hear about a lot. You're going to hear a lot about Pachotti in the years to come. No gain on the play, make it second and ten. The pitch, and let's see if he's going to throw the ball. He is. He's deep. He's going to throw it into coverage, and the ball falls incomplete. An ill-advised pass. West with three men on the intended receiver. They only sent one man out into the deep area. And uh, West defense that absolutely perfectly. It was intended for Rob Linders. He never had a shot. And again, they tell the safety. As long as the quarterback, is, in this case, it's a running back, has the ball, you get deep. The safety just drops, 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 drops. By the time the guy gets out there to throw the ball, the safety's five to seven yards deeper than the receiver. You throw the ball up, you got a chance of getting it picked. There they get lucky, and uh, they got a third and ten. Scott is slotted to the right side. Hable under center, but no one in the backfield. Straight back to pass is Hable. Throws it behind his intended receiver. And again, was Linders, and we'll have a fourth down and ten. And at this point, you just got to go I'd say you got to go. Yeah. Shackleton, the linebacker, he's he's pursuing. He's he's flowing to the outside. Habel tries to throw it. He actually looks like he gets a little piece on it to flex it away. West does a good job to hold here. Going to get the ball back. Looks like they're going to kick it. Bob. Well, Larry Green's decided to use the wind to his advantage now. Habel back in his own 40-yard line. We'll kick it. High snap. Oh, Hebel did a nice job to get it. And he'll kick it away. Well, it takes a good roll for East. It'll fall dead at the 21 yard line. But Hebel did quite a Able job to even uh, for the get close to the ball. He was a very West high snap. He held on to it. And with a wet ball, that's tough sometimes. It gets the ball away well. Now it'll be. West ball at about, I said the 20 inside the 15. It's actually down the 11 yard line. Great. So West with by far the worst field position of the night. We'll take it over. You got to think they're just going to try and power the way through the way they have the ball in this game. Starting line of still in there, understandable, even with a big lead that's deep in their own territory. And we're going to have movement on West, and it'll move them back further. And I'm telling you, Tom, when they talk to Patton after the game, that's what he's going to talk about. I'm not happy with our lack of discipline. Moving on the coach. Man. Oh, no, it's on East. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I thought I saw two players move, but the might have movement might have been caused by the encroachment of East. So it'll be a five-yard penalty for repeat first down. Central Box West, they will move the ball up. Tommy, I thought for all the world it was uh, West uh, had jumped. Just hasn't been East night. West is uh, 
offensively and defensively have been so sad. Potter with the Baxter in the eye. And the pitch goes back to Ortiz. He's got four. He's got close to the first down. He's got the first down, I believe. He's out over the 20 to the 25 yard line. I mean, it's hard to tell right now. They both have five. It's hard to tell if it's 25 or 35. Yeah, their jerseys are really muddy, tough, really tough. That's to Warden. See. That yeah. is Warden on the carry. He's getting some uh, younger kids in the game. We'll try to keep you up on it. 55 in there for East now playing linebacker. That's Nick Norvellis. He's actually a 200-pound 12th grader. He was starting earlier in the season. I don't know if he's been nicked with injuries or what, but he's in there playing now. And a quick looking pass to Dave Armstrong, who lined up split out. And that'll get five or six yards. So Armstrong shows his versatility as a pass receiver there with a quick looking pass. Look at him. Does that play? That looks like a football player. Well, they get a shot of that helmet. Look at you're talking about the stickers that, yeah. on the helmet. Now you go to there's that the side. Axe, there's there's the axe, the axes. If you get one of those axes, that's like the top award you can get during a week. And you can see Dave's got three of them on there. That's a great credit to his ability and uh, his leadership on this team. Backs are split. Potter. On the reverse, cutting it upfield, won't get much. He's had that defense well. It was the the reverse handoff, and they didn't get much on the count. Third down, three. Uh, Topa on the carry is what was what we hear the announcer say. It was 29. It looked like running Hopefully the ball. Hopefully we can not get a in the, uh, roster, Mike Pettin and Larry Green after the game the, uh, on our post game show. Maybe a couple players as well. Guy Davy Jones, who's the voice of the CBS Patriots always does a great job year in and year out here uh, as the voice of all the East games. It's so a third down and about three. 7.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Quick pass goes through the hands of Topa. Ortiz, rather. Covering on the play, Brian Scott. So it'll be fourth down, and it would appear that uh, West will have to put take their second punt of the game. Now they're going to put Brian Scott back there, and West will have to the punt here. Dan and Jarrett, Jarrett is the kicker. And as if, as if it isn't going well for West, look at the flag. It's down. The wind has died down. This is West night. Was blowing a gale in the third quarter and he's died. Good stop, gets it off. Wobbler, Scott looks at it, lets it bounce, takes a west bounce. It'll bounce inside the 30, roll dead at about the 31, uh, 35 yards, roll dead at 31. And he's will get the ball with 17 19 to go in regulation. They trail 27 to 3. Interesting. Tonight. Playing for East is Bev Avino. Playing for West is Jacob Blumgren, Matt Jarrett. Uh, his dad, Tom Jarrett, uh, was our, our first 75-pound team over at Warrington AA. It's kind of neat to come up here now as you see some of these kids enter into uh, East and West and watch them play. The interesting thing is in two, in next week, West plays Hapro Horsham. There's a kid, there's a couple kids on that team that played on that team too. A Harry Kanzies who's a very good player. So it's fun now. He's watch these kids move up into high school. Scott goes in motion, and the handoff goes to Bebavino. He's got some yards. He's got about five or six, I believe. That's Bebavino. He's 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 had the ball. He's they called his number about three times, and every time they've called it, he's got five, six, seven yards. You wonder why maybe we didn't see his number called a little bit more to counter or, or uh, compliment Scott. Well, it'll be gain of six, seven on the play, making second down and three yards to go. Got a hat for a horse and guy in the booth. Oh, I'm sure there I are more than why. a few of the black and the red around here scouting this game. Power eye formation, handoff goes underneath the Bevino, you know, and this time he barely gets out of the back till he get one or two. On. Now the old Bucksmont League, Hatboro used to play and used to play CD West, 
and year in and year out was the, the battle for the cop. So it's great. And Dennis Steinle being back there at the helm, he left for a couple of years, came back, has, has done a great job. And I'll tell you, I'm really looking forward to that if matters. It, if it is to be. It's probably going to be. And they got a nice they got a nice team over there. They beat Plymouth White Marsh early it's this season. season. It's been pretty amazing. Tripped up by Sauter in midseason, but they've uh, kind of regained their composure. Power eye, third and two. Handoff goes to Brian Scott. He's got five. Takes a move. It almost gets on the side and he trips over his own blocker. Otherwise, he could have gone all the way. Good blocking, and he made the most of it. Gets the first down, moves the ball out to midfield. So CB East gets the ball into positive territory with 5.49 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, I'll tell you. Ryan Scott, he's got another year here. He is going to be the premier back in Suburban 1 next year. There's no doubt about it. He's uh, he's he's probably the best back this year. And with a senior year on him, he's going to grow a little bit more and get stronger. There's 10, the ball just inside, and I believe West may have jumped offside, but there's no flag. The handoff goes underneath. Ball carried by Brian Scott. And Scott gets about four, maybe five on the carry. Tackle made by number nine, Brian Buckley. Buckley on the and tackle. 89, Greg Ward. I always loved it about Second West. Down, seven. They had Tommy Howe, number 12, playing defensive lineman. Now they got Brian Buckley, number nine. Hey, I mean, it's you don't see the typical numbers no. a lot of time on, on, on West teams. You got to love that. You got to love that about Petten. I don't care what your number is. I want you to play defensive tackle. Want. Want to get in there. Wear number nine. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's for the colleges and the, that's for the pros, rather. You got to wear certain numbers. Right. You get that far, you wear the number they want you to wear. Now in motion again. And they ran Bevavino off this one before, and they run him again. And uh, it didn't quite work as well this time. Nah, that time his buddy Dave Armstrong comes up, grabs him with Tony. Tony's playing on guts. We said earlier he had, he's, he had his leg banged up pretty good. Uh, but he's in there. He's got a lot of stars on his hat. He's, a, he's been a big contributor to this team. Um, early on in the season, the, the uh, pullback for, here it is here. Watch all the hats for West. There's Pachati. There's Shackleton. Here comes Dave Armstrong. And uh, there's a lot of bodies. It's pretty hard to run the ball when you got nobody in front of your block. So it's third down and about six right now. Ball at the 46-yard line. Now in motion goes Scott. He'll take the pitch back. It's a tough pitch, and he's going to get caught in the backfield. Dustin Pachati, again, this, this kid's a sophomore. He's got a lot of – he seems to have a real feel for the football and uh, he's all over that play. Uh, Dustin Pichotti does a great job there. Gets into the backfield. Again, the pitch. They had problems. He's getting it up. You want to be led a little on that pitch, and you don't want it too terrible. You want it up in your face. You don't want it in the shoulder pads. He's gotten a couple of pitches right in the pads. you got to reach in there. He's got to juggle it. And that little stutter step has kept him from getting outside. So fourth down, and Hebel will pump with 335 to go in the fourth quarter. He gets it away. It's a high spinner. He'll let it bounce, and it'll take a bounce. Good bounce for uh, East End of the Blown Dead at about the 20, maybe about the 17 yard line. And at this point, with 320 to go in regulation, you got to think that all the West wants to do is just get a couple of first downs and go to the line. Uh, I think we're going to see Mike. Uh, He's got a district playoff game next week. He's probably going to get some of those uh, starters out of the game here, get some of his uh, statements. I see him. He's, I think he's called a timeout. He's over there. He's, shirts over he's there. He's trying to get an offense together. Okay, I need a guard. I need a tackle. Give me a tight end. Give me a back. I'm trying to get a team together. And it looks like Larry Green's going to do He's going to pull his team over now and said, hey, let's get some of you younger guys in the game. But before we, before we go to uh, – to the play, it's interesting how every year they have that sophomore. This is West now. That's going to be the player. You're looking at Dustin Pachati. You got this other kid, Dan Carey. Interesting last name. Yes. Uh, number seven, a sophomore. He's been playing a lot tonight. And you look at some of the other names on the roster for West that have had see some playing time. And these guys. Hey. 
does, and what's happening right now, you see Larry Green. Here's what he's doing. This is class. This is a class act. Larry Green has gone to his coaches and said, I want all the non-playing seniors. All the seniors who have not gotten playing time this year, I want you in there for this series. doesn't matter whether West scores or not at this point. I want them on there. I want them to be able to say they played in the East-West game. And he's had a tough year, but you take your hats off, hat off to Larry Green. He's got the seniors in there, so that's what he's doing. And the officials, to their credit, are letting Larry do this. He's taking a little extra time here. And the game is at hand. The game is in hand. It's not going to be any difference at this point. Now what he's doing, he's getting over and talking to his kids. He's going to get them again. See, like uh, uh, number seventy-two. That's uh, Brad McGlincy. He's a senior. You can see him in the picture. See uh, Norvillis, 55. Yeah. He's, he's going to get some time. Number 99, that's uh, Derek Ray. He's a senior. 52, Dave Bloom. He's a, he's a junior, but he's going to get some playing time. Mm -hmm. Brian Konzelman, he's a senior. He's in the game number 45. Uh, 39, Mike Taylor. He's only a 10th grader. He's in there. So now West will take the ball. And I, I see Armstrong still in the game. I think they're going to get Armstrong out of the game shortly, give him a curtain call. I think that's what Petten would like to do. Give him a carry and then take him out of the game. Here's the pitch to him. He cuts to the right. He's got five. He's got seven. Let's see what they do there. Unless he's trying to get some yardage, make a certain amount of yardage. That's actually uh, Pachotti that ran that ball. Was that Pachotti? But I'll tell you what, he ran hard. He looked good there. Well, he looked grade. like Armstrong. Yeah, he did. So he's I guess a... Armstrong is done for the night. I'm looking at the dirty uniform and saying, boy, and the, the big body. He's saying that must be Armstrong, but it is Pachotti. 6'3, 220. It looks a lot like Dave Armstrong. Yes, he does. He's a sophomore. I guess he'll be their fullback next year. I think he's got a shot at it. Oh, look at him. He is a big boy. You see the scoreboard that tells you the score, all you need to know. The pitch goes back, carrying the ball and stuttering and then moving forward for some yardage. I think that's Joel Stars. Now checking into the game for East is Bobby Shonnevacar. He's a senior also. He'll be playing the back. On number 44, that's Anthony Green. Another name that has a familiar last name to it. Tenth grader. The clock continues to run. We're under 220 to go in regulation. Let's see who's the quarterback right now. That's Drew Tillman, who you got to think will be next year's quarterback. He goes in. And you remember games years ago, Ben Snyder. And Ben Snyder finished up, and they put this kid Blumgren in there at quarterback. And Blumgren, you said, and I remember you said, that this is going to be the next great quarterback for C.B. West. Tommy, you were right. Travis Blumgren was great. Well, Tillman is in now. you got to think you're looking at the future of C.B. West. Next year, Tillman at quarterback, Dustin Pichotti at running back, you know, and – they, no, they don't rebuild. They simply reload. Yeah, Drew's, Drew's uh, lefty. Nice quarterback. Uh, played at Warrington AA. Uh, does a nice job. And up goes to Pachotti. Well, He'll get maybe a yard. More importantly, That's he'll melt your clock down, make a third down, and five yards to go. This is the thing about this game. It's a fierce rivalry. There's a lot of back and forth. But the undercurrent is that not only do they respect each other, they are front, they, they, they play together. Families go to the games together and then go to the separate stands. And it's gone on that way for years. I watch you walking in and saying hello to as many West people as you are saying hello to East people, Tom. And it's really something to watch. Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, one of the fun games. One of the, a lot of a lot of community, and uh, it's what this this town is all about. And I I, I want to say something, and it's important. It's one of the most Tillman on the blown play. It's funny. Tom gets a lot of heat because he went went to East, and some people will come up to him and they'll say very pointedly to him, "Oh, you're a home where you go for East." And I'll say this on the air once and for all: those people who say that have no idea what they are talking about. The people who know about East-West football know that everybody is uh, is going for it. Uh, I believe we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Don't go away.
Looking for the perfect pre-owned car? Come to John Altamari Auto. With over 125 quality pre-owned cars in stock, you're sure to find the car you want at the price you want. Choose from luxury cars, vans, sports cars, imports, and four-wheel drives. Every car is warrantied for one year with current inspection, plus Altamari has a service center on the premises. Bad credit or no credit? Altamari gives you instant approval with as little as 500 down. So, visit our friendly sales staff to help you get the car you want. John Altamari Auto, located on East Lincoln Highway, 100 yards from Reedman's. On fourth bat down, CB West will punt the ball away. Tommy White has gone to the field. He's going to be trying to get some interviews after the game. As the ball is kicked, it goes away from the East players. And East will take over with 15 seconds to go in the ball game right now. So Tommy White has gone down to the field. What did I say following up on that? Uh, Tommy, of course, played for East. And he, nobody knows football better than Tommy White does. So anybody who thinks that he's a homer, well, there will be some better thinking on that. And I'll leave it at that. At any rate, East-West, great game. Now they're going to do some more substitution. I like the way the officials have handled this game. They've let the kids play. More importantly, and I'm really, I'm really impressed with this, it was a wet field to start the game. It was less than perfect conditions because it had been rainy, pouring all day. The ball was wet. We didn't see, except for the opening kickoff where the ball bounced off a, uh, an up man for West. We did not see one fumble tonight. There have been a couple of there have been a couple of interceptions, but no fumbles. And I'm impressed with that. Impressed mightily. Both teams came to play. Hey, let's face it. West has got a real good football team. East is doing the best they can. And one more reminder before we go. Gee, I, I keep wanting to say this to you, but just reminding you one last time. You want VHS copies of this game? You want to see some of these plays? Big plays in this game? Well, here's what you do. You call 215-345-5154 Monday through Friday during business hours. at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'll be glad to get you a copy of this game or anything else that you want to get of suburban uh, community television, suburban, suburban cable TV. As always, serving the community for you. I'd love to have you get a copy of this game or whatever game you want. After all, it is all for the kids, and that's what we're here for. So, it's for the ball. First and 10, 15 seconds to go in the game. And a little miscommunication. And a quarterback now is Brian Oakes. He's a 5,835 pound sophomore. And I think we're going to have a little movement on the part of East. It'll take it back five yards. It's inconsequential. That play took three seconds. So 12 seconds left in the fourth quarter in this 29th annual game. And it appears that East will go down to defeat once again. It's been a long time since East has beaten us. They came close in the late 80s. They tied one game. But uh, hope springs eternal with Brian Scott there. You never know what will happen from year to year. He's a great player. This very well could be the last play of the game. Oaks in at quarterback. He hands the ball off and carrying the ball from good yard. And you see who that plays number 46. And he'll get a first down. That'll be Ed Magenheimer. He's a senior, 5'10", 165 pounder. And that, my friends, will just about do it. They will, there's one second to go. They'll set the, they'll set the sticks. The teams are already going out to the field. So they'll let the clock run out. And that's it. That's it. So we have completed the 29th annual Central Box East, Central Box West game. CB West wins, finishes the regular season undefeated, at, and we'll head into the playoffs. East on the other side put up a, a, a brave face, but just was unable to overcome a very strong Central Box, Box West team. See the final score there, 27-3. We will take a break and see if we can get Tommy White to talk to some people on the field. So... Catch your breath, and we will be right back. Don't go away.
Now, eliminate the drudgery of no-win workouts. And cut your workout time in half. With a revolutionary fitness flyer from Guthy Ranker, other machines can create painful impact on your knees and joints. But the fitness flyer has been biomechanically engineered to work with your body's natural movement. For a smooth workout that's virtually zero impact. And when you're done, the fitness flyer quickly folds down and rolls away. For easy storage in a closet or under a bed. Try the fitness flyer risk-free for a full 30 days for just four easy payments of only $49.95. And these special bonuses are yours just for ordering. Don't walk. Don't run. Don't ride. Just fly with a revolutionary fitness flyer. Call now. Credit card customers call toll free. Your fitness flyer is backed by a lifetime manufacturer's warranty. And with our 30 day money back guarantee, you can try the fitness flyer in your own home risk free. Call the toll free number now. Well, you got to be a football hero get to get along with the beautiful girls. And there was Dave Armstrong surrounded by a bevy of them right there. You see the final score here at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Once again, West has come up the winner of the annual game between CB West and CB East. The Patriots falling to the Bucks by a 27-3 score. Bob Friedman up in the booth. We've got Tommy White running around the field somewhere. Both teams still in their post-game huddles. And you see a couple of the staff members, West and East, talking to one another. There'll be a lot of parties after these games. This, of course, is the final regular season game for both teams, the final game of the year for East. West on the other side of it will go into the playoffs, most likely against Hatboro Horsham. This game was uh, an interesting start early. On the opening kickoff, it was East kicking off to West. They kicked a squib kick. It hit a West up man in the helmet, bounced straight back, and East jumped on the ball at the 40-yard line. They moved the ball very, very well. Brian Scott doing the lion's share of the running. Got it all the way down to the 15-yard line. But again, those great teams will. West uh, arched their back and said, uh-uh, you're not getting into the end zone on us. And it was Becker putting through a 35-yard field goal. So it was 3 to nothing. CB East in the lead, 3 minutes and 16 seconds into the game. Well, that lasted all of a minute, 2 minutes and uh, 7 seconds, because West took the kickoff, moved it upfield, and on... Corey Potter on a 35-yard fake. He faked the ball to Armstrong and ran around the left side and went into the end zone untouched 35 yards. The kick was no good, so it was 6-3. to three. East was then held. West took the ball over, and they uh, took the ball down the field. Armstrong on a five-yard run. Patterson's kick at the uh, four-second mark of the second quarter made it 13 to uh, 13 to three. I'll break this up right now because right now Tommy White has Mike Carey. Take it, Tom White. Tom White with uh, Mike Carey. Mike, great season, big win tonight. Hate to look ahead, but uh, you're talking about Hatboro Horsham next week and uh, a reminder of the old Bucksmont days. What do you think, huh? Right. Well, we're excited about being in the playoffs. Uh, we won't know until about 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. Because Glen Mills is playing out in Ohio against St. Ignatius. If they win, they're in. If uh, they lose, obviously, Hatboro is the next next slot. Hatboro won in overtime today, as I'm, I'm sure you know. We're extremely thrilled with the people we had coming back this year. Uh, you know, I don't think a smart man would have picked us as the number one team in the league. Or undefeated. It's a team that's progressively gotten better week by week. Yeah, talk about Corey Potter. What a great job you guys have done with this kid. Everybody expecting you to have another Travis Blumgren, but you guys have really been patient with him, and he had a great night tonight. Uh, well, Corey, he's, just, uh, he's a true West. I was talking about this last night. He's a true West player. Um, you know, he's, he's following in some shadows and footsteps of some great quarterbacks here at West. He's not a natural quarterback by choice or by experience. He's our best receiver, probably our best blocker. We put him in that position. He's grown. A tremendous runner, as you saw at times. And, uh, you know, the passing game, we're hoping it gets better, and then that's going to be a combination of our receivers and Corey, you know, working better together. And what a, what a uh, credit goes to you and that offensive line and some of the coaches. But you got to be drooling with the, the size you got this year up there. I mean, you got the big back, but then you got the horses up yeah. front. It's fun yeah. to watch. Yeah. It's, it's been probably my most enjoyable year in 21 years. I came in here with 
no pressure. At the end of last year, we were all out of gas, including myself, and uh, came in and had young guys that mentally were sharp. And they, they uh, took what I told them and learned week to week and I was able to get some advanced techniques with them. Obviously, our size is a factor, but size is nothing without feet. We got some good speed, and uh, the nice thing is they're all back except for one next year. Hey, talk a little bit because everybody asks me why is West always so good year in year out. Talk about your weight program and a job a guy like Joe Hallman has done for this program. Well, Joe's done a great job for the program. Uh, he came on board. I think this is his, what third year, maybe yeah, his third year. He took the load off of me. I ran the weight program for 18 years. He's given me more time in the film room. His expertise is tremendous. I mean, we do. You know, we don't bodybuild. We totally power lift. Uh, we're actually stronger right now than we were at the end of summer camp. We're coming in in our pre-test. That's a credit to Joe. The question, what, you know, why are we so successful? There's a hundred different reasons, and there's a lot of little different things. Hey, congratulations. Uh, wish you the best of luck down the road. Hope you hope you go all the way. Thank you, Tom. All right, good One luck to you. Time. You got it. Thanks. See you. Tom White, Mike Carey, assistant head coach, uh, been here for years, does a great job. Let's go back to Bob in the booth, and I'll try to get somebody else to talk to. Be back to you soon. Nice job, Tommy White. Uh, Mike Carey, one thing about Mike, I've known him for a lot of years. He has always been available for comment to talk to you. Win or lose, he always has some good things to say. Uh, and, my, and Mike Carey, and now Tommy has Mike Patton. Good job, Tommy. Go get him. Tom White, again with Suburban One, head coach, champion again, Mike. A uh, great tribute to you. Bob and I were kidding in the, in the booth. Everybody says you, uh, you die and you pay taxes, and West has a good football wow. team. Uh, what a great tribute to you, and a uh, great job again this year. And you're, you're heading down to that road to district playoffs again, and uh, they're saying maybe it's Happer or Horsham next week, possibly. Well, thank you. First of all, uh, you know, you're, you're saying uh, I did a great job. I'd like to point out uh, I have a, a fantastic assistant head coach, Carry, and I won't name them all, but I have uh, about nine guys there who are doing a super job. And I'm especially proud of the kids because, you know, people often take uh, for granted, I think, that, well, you know, West is going to win the title here and they're going to go in the playoffs. And uh, it didn't have to be this year because, uh, you know, even though we have Armstrong, and I, I keep telling these kids, you were to congratulate yourself and then feel great about what you've done because unlike last year's team that we even admitted it was loaded in the beginning and uh, no surprise in the playoffs, we said that was a team that could well be in Altoona. Uh, honestly, this team, we didn't know if we'd be 500 and we some of the things were happening in camp, some of our inexperience. But there's so many kids on this team that won't make all league, but are good, solid players that have earned their dues for three years, like a Scott Warden, you know, a Dave Titus. You take a look at some of those senior linemen. Uh, they don't get a lot of recognition. Uh, you know, a lot of the intangibles that go along with a few of our uh, standout players, like Armstrong and Potter. We didn't get the chance to talk to you, but I, I'm going I'm to throw this out to you. What a great night that had to be when you played North Penn and had a coach against your son for the first well, time. Why don't you, you know, talk about that a little well, bit? You know, I think it was great for the uh, papers. They certainly uh, printed a lot in the, the media, and the fans seemed to be excited about it. Now I, people that could care less about most football games wanted to see that. And I think, uh, you know, Michael Jr., his juices were flowing, along with Dick Beck and Dave Perrine, to come back and beat the old guys, uh, Petten and Carey. Uh, I really didn't enjoy it that much. Uh, you know, it was tough for me, and I was hoping they would play very well. And when it uh, got one-sided, uh, you know, again, it wasn't a great feeling. Uh, and his mother will tell you the second half, she flat out was rooting for uh, North Penn. Is that right? But I'm very proud of the job that he's done. And I think in, in the future, when I look at the young kids he has coming back and the staff he's got together, that uh, maybe I should contemplate retirement. Hey, the old Bucks Mondays could possibly be renewed uh, next week, if it is a Hatboro Horsham CB West right. District One uh, playoff yeah. game, Dennis Steinley back after a short retirement. Uh, what a great job right. he's done there. Yeah, no question. Uh, Dennis is very competitive. His teams always play tough defense. Uh, they have good size, they have good skill people. Uh, that would be a great matchup. And some of the people make me nervous that we play Hatboro and they're talking about. 
rematch with EW, that's just the kind of stuff to get you beat. We hope we can get to that second round, and whoever it might be, Downingtown PW, uh, we'd love to be there. But with a team like Hatboro, if our guys look past Hatboro, uh, it'll be Hatboro in the district final. And, and I really make it. Uh, you know, Glenn Mills, uh, it's like a junior college team. They're not playing with the same deck of cards. Right, right. Uh, well, know. Mike, I'll tell you what, what a great tribute to the town of Doylestown. Look forward to Friday nights out here watching your teams play. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. And uh, I, I hope you go all the way. Well, I hope we do better for, you know, the people that support us. Thanks, okay. Tom. See you now. Good luck. Tom White, again, Suburban One champion, head coach, Mike Petten. Mike Petten, uh, as always, very friendly and always uh, kind to talk about his assistant coaches that do a great job. And Bob, let's go back to you up in the booth, see if I can find somebody else to talk to. Good job, good job Tommy White. And I tell you, 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 sometimes it's said that, oh, we've fallen over at Mike Patton, or we, we, we say, oh, we uh, have such praise for him. You see why that we think so much of, Tom, uh, of Mike Patton. Win, lose, or tie, Mike Patton is available. I'll give you a little story while Tommy's looking around here for somebody else to talk to. Uh, when they won their 53rd or 54th straight, to, or when they broke the Pennsylvania record for most wins in a row, Patton had all the newspapers there. They were all there in the locker room. They all wanted to talk to him, the major stations, everything like that. I was standing there. I wanted to interview him for a post-game uh, shot for Suburban. He stood there. He waved everybody aside. He pointed at me. He said, you've been here all season long. Come on over. Take as long as you want. You guys have to wait. I stood there. I walked through. I felt like you know I was the king of uh, broadcasting at that point. That's the way he makes you feel. And the thing is, he is a teacher. We say that so frequently. Mike Patton is a teacher. His staff are teachers. They teach you how to play football. But more importantly, they teach you discipline. And that goes on into life. That's why so many of his players become successes in lives. They look back to uh, Mike Patton, Mike Carey, the people who were on that staff all the way down the road, Jack Lowry, Bill Tesno, Brian Rush, Kerry Monk, uh, Chris Cleland, who played for him, of course, Joe Hallman, uh, Steve Rose, Scott Rosen. You got to say that they really do a great job in putting it together for them. And right now we have Tom with Larry Green, the CBE's coach. Take it, Tom. You got it. Tom White with head coach Larry Green. Larry Green, tough game tonight. Came in with a, a huge mountain to climb against a real tough, big CB West team. Uh, I think your team played hard, played every play as hard as uh, they possibly could. But again, I think just size-wise and physical, uh, just 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 it was a bigger team for you tonight. I, I think than you've ever probably seen in a while. <laughs> in a while, except for the last college game I was at. But. Uh, <laughs> You know, hey, I'm, I'm proud of our kids. I really am, Tom, because I thought they played real hard and they played every play. Uh, you know, even some of their big gainers uh, were, were Armstrong, you know, swatting people away like flies. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm pleased with our kids' effort. I thought we played tough uh, both halves. And uh, they're a physical team, and they, and they wear on you. I mean, they just wear on you. They lean on you and wear on you. Come, coming into the game, you know, everybody – was trying to predict the score and that's always a tough thing for you and, and your young kids but uh 27 to 3 final I'll tell you what you, you got to say that you guys hung you hung tough at the at the end uh really in the second half I, I thought played very well you, you held them on downs a couple times and uh the kids never quit and that's a tribute to you and your staff well I appreciate it it's, it's a tribute to our seniors too uh you know we we've had a lot of misfortune this year Tom and it's tough to keep your heads up you know we lost a couple late games uh tough games at the end and I just told the kids I said tonight I'm so proud of you because other teams would have quit and could have quit and uh, they came to practice every day this week worked hard and uh, I thought our assistant coaches did a great job getting the kids ready and we played hard tonight I mean they're, they're a real good football team and I told Mike I said uh, hey go all the way take it all the way you know and uh, they, they've got a very physical football team that's going to cause people in District 1 and other districts problems. Coming into the game, West had to say to themselves that we got to stop Brian Scott. Brian Scott had a couple of Good runs, but right. really they really did a pretty good job of containing him. You came out early on, tried to spread him out, and you had mm -hmm. that option, which seemed to work for you early on, but right. then they took it away from you. 
Uh, and I thought Justin Hebel did a good job to keep sure. you in the game with oh, some some big plays. He did. And, you know, what they were able to do with Armstrong in the middle is they can widen their people so wide because Dave kind of plays like four gaps. You know what I mean? So when you got a big guy in the middle that plays as well as he does, you can afford to be wider. And they started getting wider and wider and dared us to run inside. And that's why we hit a couple traps in the second half and a couple off tackles. But, uh, you know, he's a good defensive football player, too. And they're, they're a good defensive team. They got some big people on defense. I don't think their defense gets enough credit. Yeah, you're you're right. Uh, a lot of big guys on that offensive line. They get a lot of credit, as does Dave. But uh, you're right. They do they do a lot of things to you on defense. Larry, thanks again. Uh, all you do for the even the youth programs, you come out and you support them. And uh, I think uh, those kids could end up in your program, and uh, they 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 do a good job for you. So, find, uh, find those big ones. Wait, Tom. Find yeah. those big ones for us. Tom, thanks very much. Well, thank you. Thanks, SCTV, for covering us. You're, okay? you're welcome. Thank you. See you, Tom White, Larry Green, CBE's head coach. Let's go back to Bob in the booth. Great job, Tommy White. I'll tell you, you can't do any better. He goes down, he finds the assistant head coach of West, the head coach of West, and the head coach of East. And you can't do a whole lot better than that. Good job, uh, good job, Tommy White. Tell you what, uh, we talk about Patton, and you look at Larry Green. Larry Green goes into this game every year climbing a mountain that's about 10 miles high. And he gets the kids together. They work hard. They do everything they can. They're up against frequently, and I, I hate to say it, a, a superior team. As he said, last time we saw this big uh, team, it was in a college game. Uh, and, and, and really, he gets them prepared very well. And he, again, in defeat and in victory, he's another coach who really does the job. He talks to you. He's willing to, to have a little chat with you and do what needs to be done. Great job. Uh, both coaches, This is these two programs are just very, very classy programs. You can only wish the best for Larry and his kids. He uh, He's mentioned how his seniors carried him. Uh, of course, the nice little thanking us for getting involved. That's always nice to have in there, too. But, again, uh, in, in defeat and in victory, both coaches are the same. They're very easy to talk to. They're very pleasant about the whole thing. And I think Larry pointed it out. They've had a tough year and they've had to overcome adversity and it's just very tough to do. And they gave it the best that they could. So with the traffic filing out, once again, we have come to the end of another Central Bucks East, Central Bucks West football uh, game, which means we've come to the end of the regular season. But we still have a lot more coming up, possibly down the road. We have winter sports, of course, coming up. A lot of things going on. So for everybody here, thanks to our crew, thanks to our camera people, Tommy Brunt doing a great job directing tonight. I want to thank all the people who helped make this game possible. And we want to thank you for watching us. For my partner, Tom White, I'm Bob Friedman. Thanks again. We'll see you real soon. and Have a great night. See you at the game, everybody. Good night.